added that and just had that for like three and a half. And it is like Castle Valley had more water flowing down it than the Colorado River has about, I don't know, maybe it was four or five years ago after we'd had a burn, but it just sat on the port. Right. All right. We are live streaming. This now. I'll have to say that was a bit <laughs> no, overestimated. For sure. It is. It is all good. Yeah. Quite new week. Okay. It is four thirty-one. We have a quorum with four of us present. Marquetta is on her way, but running a little bit late. Uh, so I will call us to order. Do you have the agenda packet? Okay. I just realized I grabbed the other computer. Do we have any extra puppies lying around? Sure, no, yes. Yes. We have. Oh, thank you very much. Of course. Oh, I can get off my oh, we can uh, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so because at our last meeting we opted through motion to extend the public hearing for an additional 10 days, the public hearing expired officially on the 18th. So if you're here to make a comment on anything on our packet, including the alternative housing overlay, proposed overlay. Uh, your opportunity to make a comment is now during Citizens to be Heard, and we will also come back for Citizens to be Heard in about an hour. So if you're joining us online or if you're here in the room and you want to make a comment, there will not be a public hearing. This is the opportunity to make a comment. Does anybody have a comment to make on any of the items on our agenda or any items not on our agenda? Great. You don't mind coming up and just stating your name before you make your comments. And we just ask that comments be kept to less than three minutes or so, if that's all right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. My name is Elena Moore, and uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, finding solutions for the crisis that we have at the moment in, in terms of housing. And the um, what I saw so far um, on all the ideas, I think they're great, um, but they also have a lot of hurdles still because you still have to go through a lot of hoops with the building department and all of that to get uh, sewer and hookups and all of that put in and uh, what i'm particularly talking about is the van life community most of them are really completely self-sufficient so they have the gray water tank they have their toilet in there they're dealing with their own gray water and all of that so um for an immediate solution it would actually be better to just look not better but it would maybe be beneficial to look at the ordinance for um ca uh, camping so to speak they're not really camping, it would be long term, maybe property owners can get a permit, and that would maybe be valid through 2023, 2024, and when by then those permits are not valid anymore, and you know by then maybe the campgrounds are already in place, but to, to have a more immediate solution would really just be put something temporary in place that doesn't um, yeah, force the property owners to go through all the hoops of going infrastructure on the properties. That was all. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks. you very much. Elena, can you spell your last name so I can capture that? Yes, it's R O H R. Awesome. All thank right. you. Thank you. Did either of you want to make a comment? Hello. My name is Brian Martinez. Um, can I ask a couple of questions? Um, at this at this time as well, we yeah. might answer them a little bit later. But you're <coughs> more than welcome to to ask them, and we'll just take note of them. Can I just have a little bit more explanation? I, I sent an email, and you emailed me back on the uh, 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 the max density. <coughs> uh, I really didn't understand the answer. Um, sorry, I'm not really into planning and zoning, so all of the you know the underlying codes and, and what it all means. I just want a further explanation of, of, of what that is, if that's possible. I'm going to, we'll come back and we'll talk about it when we address the item. I'm just okay. going to make I'll, a list. I'll, I'll, I'll save my uh, comments then until afterwards. So. Well, so by the way that the public hearing closed, um, yeah. if you don't mind um, just kind of telling us the questions you have open, if it's easy to answer them, Elisa can when you're done, but if there's any further back and forth, we'll just save that. Okay. Yeah, so I wasn't I wasn't uh, uh, sure if under the new code, uh, the property that, that, that we have that we're trying to possibly uh, 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 develop or whatever you would try to call it, make it so that these guys can still stay camping down there is zone rural residential. And under that 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 new density thing that you guys put in, it, it's looked like you could only have one 
one unit per acre on that. It's no, I'll, I'll explain it. Okay, and so, and so that's that's that was that, that was one sense of confusion that I had with that, and I was like, oh man, there's there's no way that we're going to jump through all this stuff. And then the other thing was the timeline, and I understand that you know that, that you guys are doing this with developers and you're worried about speculation and everything like that, but like ours is just we're just trying to provide an immediate solution right now. Um, you know, there's this is what's happening. We're like, well, we have this plan. Let's see what we can do to make this work. And uh, uh, it's great, Mel. And then talking with Elise, you know, that she said that, you know, that they, uh, they were planning on working with us as long as we were working towards a solution on this. Um, but, you know, when we put a timeline like six months and two years on it, um, I mean, we just put up a building at our shop. It took nine months to let the city approve uh, the planning department, or not the planning department, the uh, building inspector approved those those uh, uh, those plans. That was nine months. That was for a place that already had architectural plans, right? Like here you go, let's do this. It took nine months for that to go in. Six months doesn't seem reasonable to me um, to get something done. Um, also, with that, I mean, the, the place that we're looking at, we're we're talking about having to put uh, uh, water and sewer from city into county, right? Even though it's the the water and sewer is sitting right there at the sewer plant. Um, right next to it is county. So we have city, we're going to have to get either a memorandum of understanding or something to get the water from city over to county. I mean, and then we got to pipe it on in. So, I mean, we're looking at quite a few hurdles on that right there to get this process going. And it's not something that we're not willing to do. I just, I don't see that happening within six months. Um, and then to have two years for a certificate of occupancy, you know, with all of the hurdles that we have, and once again, I mean, we're willing to do it, but it's going to take us time, right, to have, you know, I mean, it's going to all be done by river guides, you know, we're going to be out there with trucks, you know, and stuff like that, and we're not going to be able to just go out there and, and bring something in, and we don't have, you know, a KOA that we're basically just turning on over and saying, this is what we're going to make, um, we're going to have to completely start from fresh with this, and, uh, you know, there's nothing that can be done in the wintertime. Right? We won't be able to really start our projects until spring of 23. So it just, I almost wish there was some type of, you know, and, and I agree, you know, that the speculation and stopping that, that's a great thing. But I mean, it sounds like you guys are talking about people who are trying to make money off of this, right? Who have like commercial ventures. We're just trying to put people up so that they got a place to stay while they're down here working. And I think that that's a little bit different than people who are trying to turn a dollar uh, by renting house, which I think would be great for them to do too, because then just send my guys up that time. Those are the questions that I have. I don't know if you can answer that now or. Thank you for your comments. So Elisa, I think can quickly address the density. If there's further misunderstanding or any additional questions, we'll just come back to that when we get to the agenda. Oh, cool. Do you mind just, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so the change that we made actually made it so you could actually have more units potentially if not less so um, the maximum building footprint or lot coverage um, all developments have to comply with that already so the the eight units per dense per um, eight units per acre that was like way below the lot coverage mm -hmm. for rural residential and um what we did was instead of limiting the number of units you could have on a property, we just simply said, as long as you can, however many you can fit on the property within the maximum allowable building footprint coverage is how many you can have. And okay, that, so it's not at the, I think at the top of it, it says like one unit per acre. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the code. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. oh we're that's talking about zoning. Yeah, so yeah. this is, so. There are um, other things specific to that zone that will apply, except where this ordinance overrides it. So yeah. on the density question, if this overlay were applied to that parcel, the overlay ordinance would apply and supersede the underlying zone. But there are other things related to that zone that would still apply, if that makes sense. So no, the only thing, that totally, we were, but... okay, the only <laughs> thing we were re referencing to that has to, you have to comply with the underlying zoning is the setbacks and the building or the lot coverage and the lot coverage for rural residential, I think is 50% or 25. 20, oh, 25%. So if you took 43,560 square feet, which is an acre, and you did 25% of that, that's how many square feet of building coverage you could have. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all that I have. Thanks. Thank you. Um, did you have a comment as well? Yeah. Before you, I just want to make sure just to go back and forth. If there, you're welcome to come up. If there's anyone on the Zoom who'd 
would like to make a comment, please put in the chat that you'd like to make a comment and we'll call on you next. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Anthony Rico. I'd like to speak on behalf of our uh, in support of the uh, alternative wall over <coughs> I have a couple of concerns in regards to uh, the way impact fees are set up, if that would be an additional <coughs> impact fee per dwelling unit, or if that would be one impact fee for the entire uh, situation. Uh, we were talking about some of the alternatives, if there could be funding from somewhere else to try and cover that because it will be forever restricted. So this is in favor of the county. Um, so if the county could help out with that, that would greatly reduce the cost because otherwise the cost just goes back into the cost of those units, which just raises the rent costs. Um, I also have some concern over the gray water. I think it's a little bit vague right now. It says that gray water shall be reused, um, but that kind of also requires a certain cooperation from the user base of those areas to say, like, we have to use biodegradable detergent. Um, in the laundry and situations like that, because if people aren't, well, now we're just pouring chemicals directly back into our existing systems. Um, but yeah, other than that, like it's good stuff. Thanks. Seeing no chats. Is there anyone else here in the room? Okay, um, so we'll come back at around 5 30 and do another citizens to be heard. Um, but for now, I will move us on to ex parte communications and disclosures. Um, and I'll, I have not had anyone approach me about any single development. I have had some people reach out with questions. And anytime a question has come up, I've just forwarded it to staff um, or CC staff on high level uh, clarifications. So, does anyone else have any additional disclosures to share? Okay, we'll move on then. Two, approval of our meeting minutes from August 8th. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes? Does anyone have any comments? I'm gonna go ahead and move that we approve these minutes. I'll second. Okay, motion to approve by OB, second by Steve. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that was unanimous with five present. We have one person joining who wasn't here earlier, so I am going to just go ahead and, by chair's order, when they join, see if they have a comment that they'd like to make. And we'll move forward. Let me check their audio is connecting. So, it's just coming out there, isn't it? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to the staff report. And if that person joins and wants to make a comment, we'll, we'll open up that opportunity. So, Hey, since I've got the mic, I want to introduce our new Vista, Noelle, and uh, she just came here from Vermont, so she came a long ways, never been to Moab before. She got here, what, a week ago? Yeah, so here for the big storm and all the action. Wow. And <laughs> it's really not that exciting. <laughs> but it does rain all the time. Normally, no. <laughs> Very similar to Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> Noelle is going to be um, like our kind of in-house housing specialist. She's going to be working on um, lots of research on housing uh, policy, helping out with um, creating our dashboard on our on our website so we can have indicators that will come up and come you know to our main website page. We're going to be tracking um, how we're doing on making progress with the housing. So we're excited to have her. Glad you're here. Before we move on, since Scott is connected, I'm just going to go ahead yeah. and sit the moment. Um, so we have a somebody who just joined the Zoom call, and um, just for well, mind connecting the audio. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just briefly go over. I'm just going to read the summary, and then we'll kind of go down the list of the items to consider and see where we're all at. Items. So staff revised the ADO draft code on um, based on feedback from planning commission members and members of the public who attended the August 3rd town hall and the August 8th public hearing, as well as other public comments submitted via email. The draft code is currently in a state that communities believes is 
ready for adoption with minimal to no additions or revisions needed. The staff report provides a list of the main sticking points which have been discussed, researched, and hopefully resolved. Um, so our staff's recommendation is to review the items to consider below and make a determination whether to modify the current draft code or to send a recommendation to the county commission without modifications. So the first um, topic that we were discussing in our last meeting was whether or not to deed restrict these developments. And um, I think the general consensus was that since the occupants will naturally be local residents because they will be renting long term, um, just by the nature of this being prohibited for being rented as a nightly rental, um, the only other type of occupant will be a long-term resident so or a seasonal resident um, so we didn't think that there was a need for um, going through the process of deed restricting them unless the individual unit was going to be condominiumized and then owned by a separate individual that then we would kick in a deed restriction for that individual condo unit i don't know if you guys all have any thoughts about that one actually really like to hear your thoughts if you get closer to the county. Um, is this something that you think will be an issue? I don't think it's on the spot, but I'll put it on the spot. <laughs> the feedback I've heard from the community right now, I think it's going to be an issue. To, to not do this. I think we need to put as many, I, I, I've not had a lot of positive feedback on this right now. I'll just tell you in general. Um, and I've been to a couple meetings. And so I think the more that we can do to ensure that it is employee housing, um, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned right now. Okay. I'll just tell you that. I, I went to a GLSSEP meeting the other night and just got attacked. Attacked. And what was the, by the board or by the public? There's, there, no, there is never any public there, oh. just by the board. Oh. But you know they're, they're all residents of Spanish Valley, right? Right, right. Um, so they're kind of coming from their they're coming from their own perspective, but also the idea of uh, you, you know, yeah. Anyways, there, there, there's a lot of concerns. I'm hearing a lot of concerns, and so I think we want to put something on the table that's going to pass, right? Or yeah. what's the point? So in, um, the, in the public comment that we've had forwarded us to us, right. in addition to the comments that have come been in our meetings. The sort of prevailing themes I'm hearing are concerns that anyone will be able to just throw an RV in their backyard and we're going to have RVs scattered all around Spanish Valley, which is not yeah. how. So I, I'm just, I want to make sure this is accurate. There's nothing that new, actually. So. Yeah. Um, which I think is a valid concern, but that's the code is written and explicitly legislative in its overlay to prevent that from happening. I know that there is concern from people who say, well, this will make it harder to enforce the existing illegal camping. But what I hear there is lack of enforcement, which we are resolving in other ways. And again, because this wouldn't allow for anybody to put an RV in their backyard, it really shouldn't change the status quo in terms of illegal uses. There are people who are doing illegal things. There's right a lot now. of it. There's a lot of it, but that's not, this doesn't on its face exacerbate that. Well, and actually, I think it's, it actually no. helps that situation right. because when we so, go and enforce illegal camping, right. we don't have anywhere for those right. people to go. So it feels right. really sad so, on our part. So the question and a comment from the GWISA board was those illegal camp, <clears throat> the people that are doing it right now, are you going to force them to comply? So for, and we used one example right now. She has five RVs hooked up basically in theory, but not legally hooked up to GWISA. So GWISA, one thing that they do, they have been sending people letters because they go out in backyards and they see people just dumping right into, you know, so they, they send letters saying, hey, you know, you can't do that. And this is what you need to do to come, you know, to come, you could build an ADU, et cetera, and so on. Are you going to backtrack and the people that are already doing it, are you going to force them to come? Because there are a lot of people in Spanish Valley right now that are already doing it, if that makes some sense. And so 
I, I hear a valid concern there, and I think this ordinance creates a pathway to for them, them to the comply. Okay, that's great. Yeah, is, exactly. is kind yeah. of how I see that, and it may not be in the first round because what are we up to in terms of our numbers on how many we would a lot in the pilot program? Three hundred, and that could change, oh, right? Yeah, and so if they get okay. in on that, right? Then yeah. great, they come okay. into compliance. If not. We see how the pilot program goes. Okay. Yeah. If it's working well, then maybe okay. we increase that, and then there's okay. that option available. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is this is the county being very proactive to acknowledge that there are people by this by lack of any other viable solution living in these situations, and we want to see those people come into compliance, both for the safety and use and character of the surrounding neighborhoods, but also for the safety and, and dignity of the people living in those situations. I do think the question around impact fees is one that the community is paying attention to, which is if those people have the hookups and they're operating out of compliance with county code, and then we were to apply the overlay and bring them into compliance, would they have to pay a second time? And that's something I think to be mindful of. I, a second I, time, what do you mean? Well, yeah, they've yeah. never, well, the they time. haven't hit an impact <laughs> fee properly. They've never right. gone through what Dana does, I believe, is just they just start charging them uh, a month, their monthly. Mm -hmm. usage. That's what she's been doing. But, so so they never paid an impact fee. They never paid an impact fee. So we would need so, to think about yeah. how. Right, which right now, oh, I just had it a while ago. Yeah, um, the impact plan. fee for an ADU. Which is seven hundred or less is is thirty nine hundred dollars. And I think um, Dana was explaining to me that it's fourteen hundred dollars less for an RV. Site. It is, right? Yeah. But yeah. that's still prohibitive for somebody who is not living in an environment or. A I mean, the, the point that was made by Gwisa, and, and I I think I hope we all understand this is every time you hook up. So they had they said right here an RV site is eighty percent of a single family home, right? That's the statistics on it. So they're using that same infrastructure. They're using that same, I mean, what they paid Moab City for sewer services. So for them, I mean, they have that infrastructure to constantly maintain, to update, and you're adding that much more impact. There is an impact. Yeah. Every RV, and I will tell you, I've lived in an RV in Moab, I think five solid years. So I've been there. I've done that. Um, but it needs to be understood that there is an impact on the overall infrastructure of, mm -hmm. for example, WISA, mm -hmm. right? And so how are you going to mitigate that impact? Well, I think that would have to be a, a WISA conversation, right? The county can't ask WISA to reduce their fees No, as right. part of this. But, um, you know, what this does allow us to do is allows the county to have the tools of enforcement because we now have alternatives. We have the alternative to bring somebody into compliance through applying for this use in front of the county commission, um, which we don't have today. It gives us the ability to get better visibility into the real impact and usage across our community because we know there are all of these units that are currently sort of ghost ghost impact, ghost usage on our right. water and other, other infrastructure. Right. Um, and I think it allows us to recenter the conversation around the real need and experience of these, these neighborhoods. You know, so I agree with Steve. Um, my question back is, do you see additional things that you would like to see updated in the language of this in order to ensure, so deed restriction is one of them, so we can feel like we're sending something to the county commission that can pass. Right. I mean, I, I would just say, I mean, I, I haven't looked exactly at all the verbiage. I mean, I would just say, I, I would think you'd want to send something that you, you know, as solid as, as you can, that you think it'll, it'll pass, because we're getting all of all the feedback right now that we're getting other than these you know we, these three individuals is the first positives that i've received as far as in you know in support and yeah. i'm just stating that so we're getting a lot of people coming at us and and that's what we're, we're representing our constituents yeah. right a lot of people coming at us saying there is no way it's hard because we've been getting a lot of positive yeah. feedback in our town halls and our previous okay, meetings great. And in so they need to write in and I'll state that, and I don't I know how to state it. I'm on YouTube right now. People need to write in. I'm going to state that to you guys. <clears throat> write a letter to the county commission. You, they need to be heard. You need to be heard. And so just coming to the planning commission is not enough. You need to send a letter to the county commission. It's a super easy form that you fill out online as soon as you get on the county commission's website. Because right now we're getting a lot of 
population a lot and not a little. So uh, I'm just stating, I'm not stating my opinion. I'm just stating, I'm just giving you what the feedback that I'm getting. I Sounds just like want to say, I hope that everybody is reading the most up-to-date version right. of the code and understands like right. all the work that we've gone into making sure that right. the impacts will be mitigated. Right. And that the the decision criteria for approving one of these is is a list of right. things and it's Great. very well thought out. Great. And I, I think that it can actually develop something that right. should be pretty acceptable. So I just Good. don't know if there's a lot of misconceptions maybe and right. yeah. talking and not actually reading the code and I understand understanding that. it. I understand. Yeah. A lot of people want to be on a solution, but they're like part of the solution. Right. The other group that we've heard from quite a bit as well is people who are not landowners and who would be able to live in a place like this. Mm -hmm. and I understand right. we need to consider all of the right. impacted people, including those who can have a positive impact. But I would like, at least on the planning commission, in our town halls, in our meetings, we have heard from employers and employees. Right. I understand. And I'm just kind of reading my books of notes. Um, so the impact piece is, is a big one with them. And, and, and understanding that it does add impacts to those that infrastructure. And they're required they have, to go through WISA. And they, right, right, right. They, I understand. Yeah, every development. So I don't think bypassing those impact fees is, is oh, on no, the table. Oh, no, I don't think we should okay. bypass them. No, 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 so no, no, never we're talking changed. about providing economic assistance no, I understand. and impact fees, but not um, bypassing And them. then one question that was asked that you guys can maybe help me with, with really, well, two, a couple. Um, what is considered a collector street? That was a question that it's was- on the, It's identified in the UTMP. It's, it's okay. on a map and it's there. Okay. There's very few of them actually. Okay, yeah. okay, that helps. Um, and that's just something I can pass on. And then we're all, um, you know, extraneous, like did the fire department weigh into this? Did EMS weigh into this? You had what? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they will all the time that we have to go through our our normal application okay, process. Great. They're on our review committee. Okay. For every single no, that's, these are just I'm just throwing out questions that were asked to me. Um, okay. I mean, if you think about it, if, what's the difference of of something like this in terms of those all those factors that you just mentioned, and like an HGHO development? High density, you know, we require them to go through all the same things, impact right. fees, right. development review team, engineering, right. drainage, all the stuff. Okay. It's all in there. The only difference is the typology of the housing. Right. So if that's their concern, mm -hmm. then right. so be it. Uh, when the, you know, in the, in the general provisions of the land use care, they have talked, it, there's, you know, language in there about penalties stuff. It's $750 plus $100 a day for, what? Sorry, what? for the, for any violation of the land use code. Oh. So is that like, because that's the general, you know, thing with the land use code? Like if you were like doing the doing the ADO, like let's say, and you were having nightly rentals, would you be subject to that? Mark? Oh, you would be subject to the whole process. Um, our code enforcement department would send out a violation letter. You would have a certain amount of time. So we don't have to include that in the new thing. It's already covered. There is some language there that is that does talk about it. Yeah. Um, that what would happen if it was if you know what the repercussion would be. Uh -huh. um, are you looking at the newer version? Uh, I don't think I am. Okay. Also, <laughs> well, we had a. Um, right, is it the one we did the Google Docs? Yeah. yeah, let me just send that out again because there there is some confusion on which one is. At our town hall a few weeks ago, one of the people who was potentially interested in having one of these developments came out and said, "Make the penalty of." Yeah. Having a short term rental, you know, thirty thousand dollars. Well, that's yeah. that's what I was saying. Like maybe the penalty <laughs> isn't enough. Well, it's you know, once the penalty is that high, it's a bit more of a carrot than a stick, really. You know, in terms of ensuring. 
the hundred dollars a day. Pushing the burden of enforcement onto the person who is benefiting economically from having the property and not onto the homeowners. Because that's the other thing I care, which is I don't want to be the one routing out my neighbors. There's no enforcement. It should be the county's job. I've got all this illegal stuff happening around me, and I feel like I have no voice. And I completely understand that feeling that people express. And so let's look to our penalties. Let's let's create opportunities to say, we are doing this to support workforce housing in a time of desperation. We know that this is difficult. This is going to take some collective impact. But the other side of that is no teachers, no police officers. I mean, I spoke to somebody at one of the, the meeting, the three movies, uh, who has two family members living at Contractors Roost. They help run a daycare center. The only reason they can keep a daycare center open is because they have this availability for people who work there to live in RVs. And they had to sit for months waiting for a space. And one of them actually just found out that they were eligible for a home. They were able to stay in our town, provide a critical job to support not just that child care center, but also the people who were able to work because their children were in that child care center. And by having that option, that transitionary opportunity, it allowed them to ultimately find a longer term solution and being able to get into a home. And that's the type of success story that leads to a longer and more resilient, a more resilient community, a more healthy economy. Um, you know, we know that there are places where police officers, nurses, teachers, uh, you know, people who fire members of the fire department are living in similar housing situations. We don't have a solution for them right now. And I think I I I will I will advise this to the county commission when we talk about impact. There are many examples surrounding us in, in towns in Colorado and up in northern Utah where they didn't make the difficult steps when they still had the chance to pull out of the dive. And now they do not have an essential workforce. They do not have a healthy economy. You do not have people who graduate from high school and can think about raising their kids in the same place they grew up. And I hope that that is part of the conversation as people are responding to this. And we aren't just looking at it from the impacts of, of individual property owners because it's a community. And again, I, I completely understand people's fears. I totally understand they are valid. I get it. I understand. And we are not in a position to provide enough enforcement now that those fears are realized on a regular basis. And this has been written responding to those fears to absolutely mitigate as many of those risks as we can and to give the county tools where we can't absolutely mitigate them. Well, I guess that's where I'm getting at with, with that thing. Is it like what we have fines and the penalties, are they enough to like if you're being like, oh, hey, by the way, it is a $30,000 fine, not $100 a night. If you get caught, like if that should be in there to be like um, to tell the people, you can be like, oh, dude, that's a big fine if you nightly rent them. Can I interject something too? Maybe this might be a question for legal if we can, um, if we can parse out the violations. If it's just a violation that any one of us might do because we're not compliant, it reverts to that. But if it's an overnight accommodation mm -hmm. that you're running it as, yeah, let's throw the bug at them. Yeah. Right. I'd let them know yeah. from the beginning. You, know, so you see that from the beginning, you're not going to mess with that. So if you do, you pay the price rightfully. Right. Question for Josh. But I know yeah. he had some, um, and, and maybe you remember, uh, he couldn't use, I know there were some platforms he couldn't use to yeah. check for overnight you accommodation. You kind of figured that out now. I okay. Think, um, because the workaround with that is as long as you have, you can't use those sites on their own, but as long as you can prove that they don't have a business license, which they okay. wouldn't. Okay, gotcha. Because we okay. would never approve that a business helps. license right. in a okay. non-OAO district. Okay. So when they don't have a business license and they're okay. not in the OAO and they've been, right. caught, been caught with an advertisement yeah. online, then we can use that advertisement okay. as evidence gotcha. against them. Okay. So they do get letters of violation, and then they have so many days to um, to cease, you know, the activity, and then um, and then if it goes, if they keep doing it, then there is a whole other level. I don't know what that is, Jenna. I don't have any idea what Josh. I'm so sorry. The, uh, oh, okay. But, um, what our what the actual penalty is for illegal nightly rentals. Oh, I, I feel like every time we've gone through that process, they just resolved Stop. it and yeah. stopped doing yeah. it. Yeah, I think it's scary. I mean, I guess we're not just talking about 
it, you know, overnight accommodations. I mean, at, right now, and I think we'll all agree, I mean, part of the flooding the other day, there's a bunch of camp trailers behind Dewey mm -hmm. that are illegally stuck there and they all got, they all got swamped. Right. So the bummer is, plan. they didn't right. have Nothing. engineering and so right. that's why and so, to adjust. This, right. 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 this is a perfect this example. Um, yeah. Is right, those that are illegal and is this just gonna exacerbate that issue I don't, I don't know. And is Josh overrun right now? Do we need another code? Complete? Do you see what I'm saying? We're, we're putting all this thing, this stuff into place, and I, I think there's great value in it. But how are we going to deal with it? I, right. I don't know if we're dealing right now. Can we like, unwind that though? Like, I, I, just for the sake of addressing this in the code, how would this? And I, honestly, I'm curious, because, how would this exacerbate? Because now people are going to say, oh, well, you can have. So I'm just going to throw some campers back there, and they'll never know. Right, like right now, in theory, if you have illegal camp RVs, in theory, I mean, this again, it does come to neighbors routing out neighbors, period. Right. Josh is not driving around busting people. Right. But this so doesn't if we change. have them in, if we have them legalized and we have them in our system, we're tracking them. We know exactly which okay. which developments are alternative dwelling communities. Okay. We uh, we know them better. But who's that driving way. around tracking them? Well, meaning it, it, that's nobody's not, that, really that, doing I that. actually think that that needs to come from the county commission in terms of a policy shift, because okay. I think Josh has always been told that we don't do that as a, as a right. policy. We right. are not just going responding. out and um, right. trying to find we violations. Don't do that for, we don't do that for overnight accommodations either. Right, right, right. We, it's, it's complaint driven. Right. And so that that's not up to me or Josh to decide right. that's how we want to change the policy, right. and that's that would be something probably. I think so. But I'm, I'm, I'm just again, built you know, funneling information through me right. that's been coming at me. Well, and we right. are getting our new soon. software very soon. Economic development is purchasing some nice, big, expensive software to start tracking um, all the properties, and okay. it will generate reports and make right. everything so much easier and be able to enforce nightly rentals on right, a right. much massive, more massive scale. Right, right. I, I just see the, the, the answer, or two things. So, so I hear Chris's problems, and then I hear these other concerns, and it's like, well, do you want a nice orderly approach to this problem that's here already? That people right. are gonna do it, or are we gonna do it orderly? And then like be like, oh yeah, if you don't like it, complain about the illegal one, and hopefully that, yeah. makes it legal and not I problems. And then the other thing, see, one of the things I saw with the Glissa thing that I totally agree with. So if you have like eight spots on a, on a pad and each one of those spots is 80% of a house. Yeah. yeah. Like, so when, the, when they tap that water line, are they just doing, okay, you get that one-time impact fee. And so then, or do you get like eight impact fees so at 80%? If, I think it's Dana on now. Each she, unit would be its own impact. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. 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 So, okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you have to. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, that's yeah. good. Yeah. They should be yeah. all behind enforcement. Right. Right. Could you just click through this now? Do it. Yeah. Do you want me to stop yeah. sharing and then just admit all? Oh. It sounds, if I'm correct, it sounds then like um, it isn't all complaint driven if you've got, even before the software, they don't have a business license and they're advertising. That's not complaint uh, driven, which is in, an, an interesting kind of yeah, new so bit of policy. Yeah, the software will actually start generating reports yeah. where it's okay. searching all the sites yeah. and yeah. it'll show, oh, it'll give us a list. Of but that's overnight accommodation. Right, yeah, exactly. But, 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 yeah. but, but uh, oh, that's right, and they'd have to be advertised. These could be Overnights, maybe that aren't advertised. Of mouth, I guess that would. Be I mean, they fall sure. under overnights if they were found. I want to let's hold on. Let's just separate the concerns so that we can look at how we can pragmatically address them. So, concern number one is there are illegal overnight accommodations operating in the county. I have to complain when I see it, and nothing happens. That's an enforcement issue. That's a county policy issue. We can't address that with shoes. Right? There is. There are trailers located in my neighborhood and I perceive that they might be used as overnight accommodations. And maybe every once in a while, someone does stay overnight because like I've got a neighbor who's pretty sure grandma comes in once a month and stays in the trailer. 
but it's not, there's no pattern of it. I've looked, there's no listing of it. How do we handle that? That this, this cannot address it. That's also an enforcement issue, an education issue, and quite frankly, a policy issue that the county needs to say, do we want to allow for that site? You know, should people be able to park RVs in their side lots under the fear that people might think it's operating as a nightly rental and occasionally someone might use it? I mean, that's, I, that's a different conversation. Let's just leave it at that. Then there's, there are RVs and trailers and other types of this accommodation where people are living full time and are hooked into our infrastructure. And I don't like that. And I want the county to do something about that. I really think we need to focus on that third category because that third category is there right. are people That's living in our community right. at the margins who are not operating within the code for some reason or another. And the groundwater and sewer agency is providing them with infrastructure, which means all of us are paying for that. So the, the idea that something that allows for that use to be made whole, to have the impact fees paid, to have the county be aware that they're operating, to be able to make decisions about other similar uses because we now know this exists, I think that that is faulty logic to suggest that now that you can turn that into a legitimate use, more people will do it illegitimately. I do think it's unlikely that this will solve every single state case of somebody operating illegitimately, but now then it becomes a policy and an enforcement question. Do we want to enforce people who are not taking advantage of this updated opportunity within the land use code, or do we want to continue to let it happen and hide our eyes? Again, this code does nothing to exacerbate that problem. It only provides the path for the county to justify heightened enforcement and the opportunity for there well, to be more options. I mean, this is your opinion, opinion, and I'm not. It's not my opinion. There is nothing not. in this code oh, okay. that would, in of itself, incentivize people to start to operate. I, I mean, honestly, like we've we've worked really hard on this. There's nothing in this code that would incentivize somebody to operate illegally. If somebody is going to operate illegally where that is already happening, we should be looking to the other reasons that that is already happening. Lack of education, lack of available housing, people who have been living that way for a long time and don't have the means to move. I mean, there are other things we can be doing. Those are social issues that we should be looking at resolving alongside providing a legitimate path for this type of use to happen in places where the county commission deems it a appropriate use of land given the surrounded properties and location to the city and so on and so forth. Like I, I, and I do think it's part of the county commission and the planning commission's job to speak accurately about the incentives that are existing in our code. So I, I, I'm not trying to argue with you, but I, I help me see where in the code we incentivize illegal use and let's fix that. Let's remove that. Let's address it. If it's just, I think people are going to do more of this thing I don't like. They already can't. So. That's what we need to address. Why is GWISA letting people hook into our infrastructure without paying impact fees when they're illegally parked? That's a question that this does not address, and I don't think it can address that. You know what I mean? So, so help me see where this incentivizes that. I, I, I think I'm, I think I'm done talking for now. No, no, I, think I I'm gonna, no, I, I just I think I'm done talking for now. I, if I have something else that to to pass on, I will. But I, um, I, I'm trying to 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 just state not only letters that the commission is receiving totally. and which are very well written and people are quite concerned, but also state, you know, I just went to this meeting the other night, there was a lot of concern over it. So I'm just trying to pass that along. I um, think it's great. I, I think it's so, so great people have been engaged on this issue. Right. But and, how, and, can, and how can we I mean, resolve? I guess, That's know, what I'm, I'm just trying to Well, I guess resolve? one, you know, I mean, this is totally an aside, but, you know, what's our build out on 80? use right now and can we incentivize ADUs? Can we do something that's already existing that won't, you know, totally shake, you know, I mean people are sh shaken by this, right? So, I mean, you know, like I put an ADU, I have an ADU on my property. I have a family living next to me. I provide affordable rent for them and it's great. I live in a teeny tiny house. Mm -hmm. And it's like, can we incentivize building out ADUs to start? And then, anyways, we just can't, we can't rent control in town. So if we incentivize ADUs, it doesn't actually matter because it doesn't mean that that is going to go to our residents. But we housing. can't rent control our RVs be, either. Our right. sites. I mean, somebody can put in eight of these slots and charge two grand a piece. Right. It's the same we, idea. But now I'm living next to eight RVs, 
instead of having an ADU. But that this, this, I'm, I'm just, I'm playing the devil's advocate. We have, this plenty, is of, some, we have plenty of devil advocate on, on this right now. We really but, but it's also, it's also important that, I mean, these are the things that are going to come up. I so so to. we have to, we have to be as good as we can. I, I like a lot of the answers I've heard, right? But you know, we should be, we should be practiced for answering that. And this is, of course, it, it is the workforce housing, much of it. So that, that, that will probably keep the prices down somewhat too. So they won't just skyrocket. Right. For the record, and I think we're all in agreement. I think there's more agreement than not. Yes, we need to address these concerns. One of the number one ways we address this concern is this is a legislative decision and an overlay. Yes. Nobody is going to be able to put in eight RVs next to a random house. And if they are, it will be very obvious that eight RVs just popped up and we can very quickly go into the database and go, wait a minute, those can't be there. And part of having hookups and things like that enable that type of very visible enforcement. So if there is concern that this is going to allow for illegal behavior to happen, illegal behavior is already happening and this makes it easier to enforce. I'm just saying the county commission will have the ability to say yes or no for every single one of these developments that comes in, period. If the county commission does not think that these belong in rural Spanish Valley, and I live in rural Spanish Valley, I live right down the street, so I get it. The county commission is going to have that utmost authority and every single time one of these come in, neighbors will be able to petition the county commission and say, this doesn't make sense here. So that was, and again, what I'm trying to get at is not, we should debate our thoughts on this. Let's pick this apart. Let's look at every single way that this could be taken advantage of and let's address it as opposed to arguing about perceived risk and perceived impact. That's all I'm getting at. Bob. And I do think it's great that we have it as an overlay. Yeah. It is a, it's a very and, nice thing. And it sounds like interest in deed restriction is coming up and that is something that the county commission would think would help to provide an additional Guard. And so I think that's one that this is where this conversation started is probably worth us considering including in our recommendation one way or another. So yeah. I think the deed restriction is problematic also because we have to decide if that's going to be for ownership and occupancy. And the reason that we've used deed restrictions in the past is when you are when a, a property is is changing hands from a from a developer to a, a, a buyer to an person who's going to own that property. And we've been wanting to prevent more and more the housing stock going to secondary people that don't live here, non-residents, um, has second homes. And this is not that type of development. It's rental properties. So they're not, people aren't owning them. And if they are going to own, if they're going to condominiumize the unit, then the deed restriction kicks in and then they will have to be um, qualified and minimizing it. Well, case it. I don't what? know why we would. I thought we had removed that. Do I? Sorry, I was on a different. Thought. No, no, no. Okay, hold on. Yeah. I remember talking about this, but yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we, it's up for, it's on the table for sure. I think there was, there's other input that let gotten that says, but why, why wouldn't we allow that for folks that might live here? That <coughs> it's like an entry ship, entry level kind of equity building opportunity. Let's put that aside. Let's come yeah. back to that. I think that's worth. A discussion. See. Lost it. <laughs> and a discussion with I wasn't here for the last few weeks. I apologize if I if I missed something when I was reviewing meetings, but there was we've completely tabled the discussion about partnering with electrics on this. Um, is that correct? Um you mean in terms of securing a property that they might be able to um, I think allow that people to lease their property to like we Discuss this like a month ago. Maybe mm -hmm. yeah. the their portion of the property land trust, which would circumnavigate or circumvent this whole problem of rent and right, whatever. The well, I think that's still a, totally on the table, and that could still be pursued even if when this gets approved. I think that the land trust could be an applicant because they want to buy a property. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. They could be not... the property owner, and they can they could have a bunch of rental units on there. But is there something you wanted to add? Yeah, we were discussing like people, private ownership, people who want to offer their property for this, put, put, like, excuse me, I'm making a gosh about this. We discussed earlier when we were having our land use code meeting about specifically this kind of thing, working with the land trust 
where private landowners who have surplus property that they're not using, or maybe that's the incorrect way to say it, but they have a lot of property and they're interested in using a section of their property for this specific use, leasing their property for a fixed amount of time to that's a different it's a land trust for this specific thing though. Oh, well, we, we talked about it for ADUs. Right. Um, we talked but about we also talked too. about it for this. Yeah, Sorry, we did. So we did. Here, here's what I'm going to And that can totally happen. If there's interest in adding that to the language, I think we should motion for it. Otherwise, based off of the amount of concern, things like yeah. condom minimizing and things like that seem like they overcomplicate where we want to get to for step one yeah. to get to the pilot to be able to see the type of applications that come to the county commission in this pilot process, at which point, yeah. not only will we be able to potentially look at additional okay. things, but also to make more clear the restrictions and the regulations that we can introduce and updates to this ordinance if we deem it necessary mm -hmm. before and if this were to expand for broader use. Okay. Again, the whole intent of this pilot program is to allow us to allow the county through legislative authority to assess the real need once it's a viable option and advise on requirements. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, Paul. Go ahead. No. Nope. Oh, I was just not in my head. You were just not in your head. head. <laughs> Man, I wasn't sleeping, though. I don't <laughs> Aaron. I would just like to say, like, with the I think with the with the concern that I'm hearing from you. Uh, with the county council is like I know contractors right now. If you want an ADU built, I I think though from what I hear, it's going to wait two or three years. <clears throat> That's right, what I see lead out for, contract. for contractors. Right. Um, I see yeah. one of these is like and so an ADU like two hundred and fifty dollars a square foot, um, or I'm sorry, two like it would maybe cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So if renting that out at half a percent is still a thousand dollars, which would be like a, if that was twenty five percent of your income would be a thousand dollars. You have to make four thousand dollars a month to make that affordable. Now a couple could do that less money. So I'm seeing these as like the lower income option. That's like because that doesn't even count the price of land with that ADU. And I I think the ADU idea is great, but this is a way I'm like. Wow, you can put up a pad and stuff that maybe can be transformed. Like, if you want to develop that property more, I think it's like a real basic way to add stuff on. I mean, we want, you know, if you want to pull the plug on this, what you're going to have to chop up some concrete instead of like bulldoze a house, too. So, like, I see it as like, uh, you know, you know, I'm the new guy here, but they're saying this can be available by next year is a fast thing. It's like, oh, you could already be building these before you could be, get your ADU started in three years, two or three years. So <clears throat> that would be kind of my like response to that idea is like, this is a short term thing for 300. We got a 300 thing people thing. We might have, I think, in my opinion, I think we probably have over a thousand people on this by just looking around, you know. And, uh, you know, we have 300 official on that thing. So I'm like, well, you know, like, can we take care of 300 fast in six months if that's fast? And you could throw one of these up. I mean, I could operate a mini X and get one of these done in like a week. I, I grew up a couple. So anyway, that's my comment on it. It's another quick question. Another reason why we were swayed away from deed restriction, was that because the hospital's capacity to I mean, that's field applicants. definitely a concern, but I don't think that they've um, said no to being able to handle more monitoring. They're getting new software as well. So, sure. Yeah. I think it was just mainly because this was going to be for rental properties and deed restricting properties for uh, as rentals. I don't, it's only for occupancy. And we, we already have the law for illegal and rightly rentals. So you can't you can't rent them out any other way except for long-term lease. I mean, yeah, I think you the, can't see too many. The argument against that is, you know, courts for birds on that, right? Where you have the snowbirds coming in, they aren't working there. And I mean, it may be sufficient to put in the code, just as you cannot use these for overnight rentals, these units must be uh I think you know, occupied by members of the workforce and say, 
hey, it's your requirement to, uh, as the owner, to just keep a running log of the people who are staying here and their current employer and employment status. And if you ever get audited, we're going to ask to see that. And if we don't can't see it, it's going to become a bigger deal. So, I mean, there are means that we can add additional enforcement without requiring these overwhelming um, oversight of the restriction. So, a suggestion. Let me to, come back to clarify just the yes, yes, yes. quick the intent on my question there. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of like Switzerland really on the deed restriction. I actually think it's, I'm just thinking of, you know, what makes this, you know, more easily sold to the, That's what the I county commission. Yeah. I, honestly, I think it, honestly, I think it's kind of a non-issue. The only thing it would be an issue is the con, if it was kind of minimized, but that's sorted because there would then be a restrictive covenant in place. So. Just exploring that. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I think you're in the right. Info on it. Let me let me follow that thread. Let me come back to square one. What are all? Let's not have discussion. Let's go round robin. What are all of the concerns, perceptions of risk that we are wanting to address? I'll tell you what I've written down so far. This could incentivize more illegal camping, such as what we already see in Spanish Valley. People won't pay. This will have more impact on our existing infrastructure and people won't pay it for it. I'm not sure I totally understood the concern about hookup fees, but I captured that hookup fees are a concern. Yes. Uh, fire. So does fire and EMS go along with this? You also mentioned that. Um, why is this the right option as opposed to other options currently available to us, such as ADA? Um, what other concerns? of doing this or not doing this, do we want to address to make sure that we can send a positive package to the county commission? So round robin, what else is not on that list that we need to look at this? Person? You mentioned not doing this. I've gone down to Flagstaff. They don't allow RVs in your parking lot. And I felt like that city is a snobbish, like, like <laughs> uh, elitist place. And I'm like, eh, great. These guys live in their camper. Awesome. They're great neighbors. You know, they don't make any more noise than the other neighbors. I don't, I don't know. That's kind of my, my thing is like, I, I, I'm a strong proponent of keeping my head a little funky. And I think this would add the flavor. Well, the other concern I've heard, I don't know if it's a concern of the county council, is what if somebody developed four acres in, uh, in a, an area that it was one unit per acre down in Spanish Valley, how would it impact the community? Is it almost like a piece of spot zoning? Now, I'm not sure the county commission would approve such a big thing in such a dense area, but it's a, it's a concern that in fact, we got several letters worrying about density. I think it was maybe before the last meeting. So. I mean, right now the county commission hasn't allowed any rezones that were rezoning rural residential recently any anything dropping below one acre so i'll just tell you that so i mean get ready I, I, i'm just again you know anybody who's tried, tried to you know take anything of an acre and chop it into half to two it's not gone through other concerns i want to get an exhaustive list we're going to break the citizens to be heard and then we're going to come back and talk about making sure we mitigate this risk. i just should add that's not necessarily my concern. It's a concern of her. No, no, but, right, yeah. totally. Yeah. Yep, that's right. what we're, our job is to take yeah. take that in, and yeah. And I mean, we 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 did already talk about the ADU concept in the in the build out. And Aaron, I'm going to kind of go against you here for a second because the reality is, right now, these little tiny homes are being sold on trailers and can be blocked down. I I I live in a shipping container home. I you are correct. I've built a number of homes in this town. But when I talk to a, a, a contractor and I have really good friends that are contractors, they're like, I can't get to you for two years. So I, I did a shipping container home and plopped the thing down and had it down within six months going through the whole process. And fairly reasonably, I mean, I didn't have to buy more land because I'm allowed an ADU, right? So fairly reasonably plopped this thing down. My mortgage is 450 a month on that thing. I'm so sorry. I'm, I really want so to just get I, us to I understand. So, but, but, but the point about, I, I'm just saying, like, when we talk about building out of ADUs, I, I just want to kind of, you know, it, it's something we should, we should look at. 
because it doesn't need to be done in the traditional sense. There's zip kit homes, there's all these, you know, I'll try to no, no, no. It's, it's good. It's I just want to get to this list well. so we can have citizens to encourage. Any other risks you want to get on this list? The only other thing I'd like to see is we're very, I keep coming to this thing, we're very Moab in Spanish Valley centered. I mean, there's part private land just on the on the Green River line up there that possibly could be used. Um, you know, I, I just I feel like we're always talking about Spanish Valley and there's other places that this may be, you know, more palatable, maybe. Uh, I think it would be a great idea for areas around Thompson and Green River, but there's no water up there. Mm -hmm. Right now, the, the, the limiting factor in Thompson is water. They're over allocated in water and they can't do any development. I haven't heard any concerns. I, I'll, I'm speaking to, you know, my friends are all people who are in the working class and, uh, you know, aren't retirees or older people who had the luck of being alive in an economy that benefited them and was, you know, really just treated them really well. And they were able to invest in property for really cheap and buy their house for a penny on the dollar or whatever, you know, just like, and none of us can afford homes. I could certainly not afford to put an ADU on my property. I own a house in my lab. It took everything me and my partner had to buy that property two years ago. There's no way we could afford an ADU. We can't even afford to put like any kind of like improvements on our house right now. You know what I mean? And we make a reasonable income for living in my lab. We are fine. But all I've heard is most of the feedback that I've read and heard from is older people who are in a very positive position and are having a hard time, I think, having empathy for those of us that are younger and are not in such a, you know, fortunate place. And every young person I've talked to in my community and other people that I've met and talked to, I've been trying to talk a lot to people that work in this community and that I'm friends with. And all of those people have nothing but positive things to say about this because they just want a place to live. And they are so excited about this opportunity to be able to have some dignity and be able to have a spot to live. They're not excited to have a party at their RV. They're not excited to set up fireworks in their RV. They're not excited to cause hell for their neighbors. They just wanna be able to have a place to live because right now they're driving out 15 miles south of town to go park their van somewhere so that they can sleep the night. And they would much rather be in a place where they can go cook some food at a little communal kitchen. They can go to a real bathroom. And so that, I have no concerns to report. Everybody I've talked to in my age demographic within 10 years of both sides is full positive support for us. Please have them write letters to the yeah. county. Commission. I fully intend to. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, it is 5.33. What we're going to do is we're going to break for citizens to be heard. Because of the interest in this, I'm going to keep comments to three minutes and I'm going to be tight about that. So I just want to let everybody know if you're here to make a comment for citizens to be heard, I will give you three minutes to make a comment. Um, we'll have other opportunities to comment on this if this, uh, well, I guess regardless of whether or not this results in a positive or a negative recommendation going to the county commission. Um, with that, I saw one person said that they wanted to make a comment. If anybody else is interested in making a comment, please put a chat into the chat box and I will call on you in the order that I see your chats. So Michael Scarter, you're welcome to come off of mute and I'm gonna give you three minutes. If you can hear us. Michael, can you hear us? Yeah, am I heard? Yes, go ahead. Fantastic. Uh, so a significant number of overnight rentals in Moab and Grand County are owned by large corporations that are out of state. And these accommodations have appreciated quite a bit. And this capital appreciation doesn't generally benefit the local residents. Um, and so I'd like to propose a subgroup that of to the overnight accommodations overlay that would give the opportunity for local residents to benefit uh, from this appreciation. Um, this would be a fourplex that is owner occupied and the other three units would be av available for short-term rentals. And the, a couple exceptions would need to be made. This, this wouldn't uh, be uh, restricted by the overnight uh, stay to a permanent resident ratio uh, that we have right now. 
Um, and the reason that you could exempt this is because each one that's built would naturally uh, meet that ratio and meet the housing that's required. Um, one of the benefits of these is the a Fannie, uh, an FHA loan um, requires only 3%. And so while not everyone would be able to benefit, that there's a middle class in Moab that would be able to, to, to purchase one of these for 3%. And then by, by putting it on Airbnb and cleaning, they would be able to cover their own rent and the other three rents and still make a, a, a significant living and also benefit from the capital appreciation. Um, anyway, I think this would be uh, something that would help um, a, a lot of, of building has stopped in Moab um, because nothing is, is doing. And this would allow some building to still occur and would benefit um, a constant contru construction industry in Moab and Grand County. Um, anyway, I, I, perhaps uh, if there's interest in this, um, anyone's welcome to, to contact me. I'll put my information in the chat. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Does anybody else wish to make a comment? During Citizens to be Heard, I'll remind that there is no public hearing for this item. The public hearing was open until the 18th as per our last meeting. So if you'd like to make a comment around anything on our agenda or not on the agenda, this is your opportunity. Okay, seeing none, uh, we will move on. So let's use this as a moment to reset. We want to send something to the county commission that can pass. Part of that includes encouraging people to write letters. So here are the issues that I have documented that we can address tonight. One, how do we make sure that we have to the best of our abilities, disincentivized or remove any potential incentives for people to use this code as written to construct additional illegal uses? One, it's a question of hookups and impact fees. I'm going to go ahead and put a check next to fire and EMS because they have been consulted and will be consulted for the overlay process of any individual project. Uh, why not ADUs or some other use? Um, back to that. Noise, traffic, and changes in density to surrounding neighborhoods. We want to make sure that this. Uh, Really, if this doesn't effectively address it in its regulations, it should effectively address it by giving the county commission the discretion to approve or deny any one of these based off of those items. So we need to make sure they're in the considerations of the decision that county commission would make in one of these lists. Before we move on to this discussion, anything else that needs to be on this list? Rich, anything else you would want to add? Does that, does that cover the general concerns that you've been hearing and that you have? So, um, let's do this from the bottom up. So, well, first fire and EMS. Does everyone feel comfortable fire and EMS that it's not an issue that this is not an issue related to that. They have been consulted in the process and they would be consulted at the over there. Do you feel comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Do we feel comfortable with that? Hookups and impact fees. Um, Chris, do you mind just restating the concern that came up there. Is it that well, I think it, it, is Dana not online? She just did it. she just join? Oh, great. I've, I've been here for a minute. So maybe we can we could ask Dana directly about impact fees and, and hookup fees as they relate to GWISA. And and just Dana, I, I know you would know this, but just so everyone knows, I am gonna ask that we separate any like personal comments about whether or not this should or shouldn't happen. Those can be included in public comments, but we'll talk about the the policy aspects of this and how that relates to the concerns the community is bringing up. So Dana, um, or Trish, do you wanna recap the, what you think you heard or I want to? So Dana, you know, from the meeting the other night, I mean, <clears throat> can you just reiterate the, is it, the hookup, or sorry, the impact fees for, I would, I would assume it'd be considered an ADU 
is 3906. Is that, would that be No, it, it's the one, if you have the paper from there, it's it's basically 80% of a of a impact fee for a house is what we charge for an RV spot or uh, a campsite. So that, that's what we charge. Um, I don't have the numbers right in front of me like I did at the board meeting the other night, so I apologize for that. Uh, we do charge them per site. They uh, may or may not need a separate connection depending on how many sites they have and what size connection they have to start with. Um, so that would bring in other fees plus uh, you know, having to go across, do road cuts and stuff. I mean, going across somewhere like Spanish Valley Drive, for example, could run $10,000 just to run the water line. That's not for the impact fees or anything else. That's just the contractor to run it. Um, you know, I've been talking to Ashley, or we've been talking at Quista to Ashley where I'm about putting in new, more employee housing on their lot on the highway. Um, and she is definitely concerned about the price of the fees. Um, I will tell you that members of our board at our meeting last Thursday want me to uh, contact our engineer, possibly uh, do another study to see if the long-term RV parks generate as much water use as a single family home, in which case they would be charged appropriately based on the type of storage, source, distribution, um, et cetera, that we would have to provide to those sites. Um, I don't know if it's been studied before in these long-term parks and how they work. Um, you know, a lot of the our regular RV parks are charged the way they are uh, for peak demand, but also because they're not, um, you know, at full occupancy 100% of the time and the people aren't there 365. So a little bit different and something that our impact fees may not address. Um, some of our board members in particular um, were concerned about the fact that we, and myself, is that we have um, folks who are running illegal ADUs or illegal RVs in their property. Um, our basic philosophy has been not to tell on them, not to get them in trouble, because we know how hard it is to find somewhere to live. We basically just charge them the monthly rate uh, for, their, for their RVs, which is a full hookup. However, if this does become legal, um, you know, that uh, we would like to go back on everybody that already has them and collect their impact fees just like we would on a new development. And that is something that we would definitely, um, we would definitely pursue as far as I can tell from my board. Uh, it wasn't an action item or anything. It was just discussion. And I did want to reiterate their thoughts as well, is that their position has nothing, it is not meant to promote or dissuade the ordinances you guys have written, it has nothing to do with that. It's our ability to serve. And so we're not giving you an opinion on whether or not we think it's a good idea. We're giving you an opinion on ways that, you know, just like I, I joined in right after Trisha must have said something about this, which I apologize <coughs> for being late, but, um, you know, it, it's, there's concern amongst the public about, you know, perception and you see people camping in people's yards and they call and they say, are they paying their fair share? You know, everyone else is paying for the ones that aren't legal at the moment. And that's a concern for us as well. Can I ask you, do you have any idea of the amount? And I know this is a tough question of illegal RVs that you're charging for right now. Do you have any idea? I would say it's at least a dozen, if not no. more. That's, that's, that's good. That's, that's a good number to know. That's great. So, yeah. Lower than I yeah, thought. way lower than I thought. So, yeah. Dana, I just want to restate because I want to make sure I capture what you said accurately. Um, so, because there's definitely um, not lowercase t tension between some of these. So, one of the concerns that we hear from people is that this will enable more illegal uses. We know that there are some cases where illegal uses are have been able to hook up to our infrastructure and if this went through not only well put aside because you can't speak to enforcement but this would allow you to more confidently remove the incentive it would almost disincentivize that use because now those folks would not have a way to connect to our infrastructure without paying the impact fee and therefore be a legitimized use uh, under the overlay did i capture that correctly i don't know <laughs> it, it sounded a little odd. Um, what basically, 
this I, I can't see or we can't see why someone who is has an illegal hookup that we're charging monthly sewer rate to, which we paid a mob city for the treatment plant, et cetera. Um, why we would not charge them impact fees when the person next door is trying to do legal stuff, they should pay impact fees as well. You know, and they're brand new. Why should the other person get quote grandfathered in? That's not okay. We, we wanna, and if not, those illegal ones need to be gone. And, and that's unfortunate, but it's true. So they didn't pay for fire or EMS impact fees either, or the library or school or whatever, you know, people realize that, you know, they're not paying taxes on this either. And so we're missing a bunch of Grand County tax on these illegal ones too. And it's probably closer to two dozen and I can run a report when I get back to work tomorrow about that, but um, then give you guys an update on how many, but <clears throat> it, it's just, uh, yeah, that's all. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> But I think you got it right. I'm I'm not sure, honestly. To state then, not as a question to you, but what I'm hearing is, one, this would allow the county to have more teeth behind their enforcement of illegal camping, and two, this would disincentivize people who currently use illegal camping as their dwelling because now Wisa would not have the ability to say, I don't see anything. They would have the means to enforce it. So it would actually, in the areas that have come up with concern, it would most likely have the effect of reducing illegal camping through those two mechanisms. Is there, am I, yeah. I, I honestly think that the people who are going to do it are going to do it anyway, and it doesn't really matter. Um, but I also feel like um, people, they're just going to do what they want to. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I don't, if they want to have an illegal camper, they do. The other thing is, is that when you have one human being who works 40 something hours a week, who's covering the entire county um, and their complaints, and it's all complaint driven and not just, hey, driving around and seeing stuff, that the county's at a disadvantage for code enforcement and, and our guy needs some help, to be honest. <laughs> Might be a good opportunity to include in our recommendation in recommend a recommendation that the county reconsider our policies on enforcement for this and other issues at the time of taking it. Yeah, I think I want to reiterate this keeps coming up in my mind every time I'm talking about this topic is that by having this ordinance in place and then having this code and permitting path in place, we're actually able to enforce illegal camping because as of now, we have a hard time with that because these are people's lives and their homes. And if we tell them you can't live there anymore, but we have no alternative for them, that's pretty rough and we don't wanna do that. So that's why we're providing this as a path so that when we do have this adopted, we can, out go, we can actually go feel good about saying, okay, you need to pay your fair share for, you know, we're bringing everybody into compliance and here's the, your path forward for that. Otherwise we don't have any way, we, it's kind of like we're just stuck in a pretty hard position of, we don't, we don't evict people, you know, mm -hmm. and so we have to find a way for them to still live somewhere. <laughs> One concern I have on that to build up, oops, sorry. Oh, uh, you know, we're only allowing these where there's certain of those connecting corridors uh, or collection, sorry, what is it, collection roads? I mean, what happens if somebody, oh yeah, I got that illegal one that's not on a collection road. Somebody complains, now it's like, there's going to be so we, many different yeah. scenarios, Aaron. Yeah. I feel like I'm just saying, we like, can't think of everything. But here's the thing that requires well, we not a requirement, it's a should, should be limited to parcels. And it's one criteria that the commission can consider. Okay. Yeah. And it's not, it doesn't have to be. So I want it, that's why I'm trying, we're trying to put in here some flexibility for the commission to make these determinations the best that they can to, you know, for, to think of all those different scenarios. We're building out the Toolbox. Yeah. So just a note, if you're going to include a recommendation, including potentially moving from uh, complaint driven enforcement to active enforcement, I would think that the attorney would probably want to do some research on that. It kind of opens the door to discrimination cases mm -hmm. as when most code enforcement is done on a complaint basis. I get the sense the conversation has satisfactorily satisfied. <laughs> I think that we have met the burden of 
making the point. I don't think we need to include it in the motion to ensure that the conversation moves forward. I agree, but okay. That's a really good point. Okay, so coming back to my notes. Um, okay, so we just talked about hookups and we started talking about incentivizing it for legal uses. I'm going to ask about the policies, not the perception, especially the fact that, you know, Dana said, people are going to do illegal things. We have lots of laws in this world. Um, what, if anything, needs to be added to the language of this ordinance to make it more likely to pass by addressing concerns about real or perceived incentivization of other purposes? have any suggestions i know we've gone over this a lot i know staff has gone over this a lot but this isn't this is our opportunity i mean i see you could like put in bold and print bold face and capitalize uh the amount of homeless people are here <laughs> well and that, that actually is right. only what the multicultural yeah. center knows yeah. about so it's just mm -hmm. got to be a fraction of what it is well it's not just the multi i mean is it they're real? they're yeah they're blending um all of the individual or entities that provide services to us oh, so, so it, it could be moab solutions multicultural center sea cave and they all that that database so is I, gathering all that I and thought, that's an so, so our workforce yeah. members that have to find housing in our mountains we don't have numbers for that it's just people that are seeking the services. services so people likely not services. yeah sorry uh, I right no that's okay so, let's see Okay. okay. Yeah. I do think I personally, for enforcement reasons, and given that this is a legislative overlay, I personally don't think we need to go as far as deed restriction. I do want to include language along the lines of these shall not or these shall be occupied by members of our workforce and uh, yeah. owners of these properties are subject to audit and enforcement at any time. I got that one. I'm keeping a list of the items that will be modifications to the code so that we can mark those in the So we can have them. Does anyone I, disagree? I, want to put, I disagree with that. Okay. And I think now this is spurring my memory when we went back to when we were first creating this. And I think when we first went away from the deed restriction language is because if somebody is renting these out uh, through the main season for seasonal workers and they leave, having them be open that potential for you know one month to three months of non-workforce work non-workforce housing could help offset some of those impact fees that you know we're seeing because if there's not a local to rent it i don't want it to sit empty i think the i, I think, think the, the owner should have the option to rent it out Wait, rent it. Oh, you mean to somebody, Sorry, who's, to, to, to somebody who's to not a work, work like actively yeah, still employed. not short term rental, but right. exactly. So that would likely make it harder for it to pass with, through the county commission. And sure. by public, by all these neighbors that are concerned, if, it, if that was an opportunity, I think that probably would be more concerning to people. I'm, I understand where you're coming from. I think that's a, a reasonable thing to ask. And maybe just for the pilot, we say no for that. And then. No, this. Hold on, sorry. I wonder how really quick. I'm just, just yeah. we're gonna have a motion for each of these adjustments. So let's table. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. It's funny. I didn't. I, I was oh, sorry. it's gonna be a fun one. I know. It's <laughs> gonna be a fun motion. So it's gonna oh. I, I was only gonna say um I totally agree with I, I'm gonna go back to my point. I was looking at the whereas on the bottom of the first page that says, you know, there's 165 adults and 98 children. These are HUD people who don't have stuff. The other one is about how many rental units are available, which certainly isn't the extent of our homeless homeless problem. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's nothing we're going to change in the whereas is anyway. Okay. Um, Can I just ask a question about this, yeah. the process as this does go, if this 
does go to the county commission. Let's say if we left out deed restrictions and it's extremely controversial, public is inflamed, county commission hears about this, county commission doesn't like this either. They can just yeah, say deed restrictions, yeah. isn't it? Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're just kind of doing eighty percent of this, right. and then we just yeah, yeah. throw it up and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let the green and that and this all right. will be reported in the yeah. for the county commission. My staff report, like okay. the history of the conversation, and what the actual, right. you know, what we right. what were some of these sticking points, and right. why we just decided not to go with the, something, you know, and maybe if they wanted to put it back in there, they they would have the option. To do okay. And we're also able to edit this with it in the year. We're doing the year, um, the pilot wanting program. to do your pilot program. I think and then we can revisit we, it if we want. Yes, we can, yeah, exactly. A year, it will be in place for a year, and then, and that's that's up for discussion too. I yeah. threw out those terms for a pilot program, meaning one year to submit applications and up to 300 um, units. So I don't know how you guys feel about that. Um, I think it's reasonable. We can see how it is in a year and. And the rules and regulations that this pilot group would be under, would that, would they be grandfathered to those? Or if then this ordinance was changed and, you know, memorialized with rule restrictions that were different, mm -hmm. what then applies? I know the H, I mean, it would be like the HGHO, they would still be, they would still have whatever they were approved for. Yeah. The, development approved for? Okay. the yeah. development agreement and the master plan. Just cool. sure. Yeah. And also while we're on that topic, I wanted to address one of Brian's comments about um, the timing for lapse of approval. So in here we have the lapse of approval. So for the application part of it, um, that you would have to, once you get approved for the district, then you would have to submit a site plan within six months. So we feel like that's reasonable because you're submitting a site plan already as part of the district application. So you're already doing like almost all of the work. I think that's, I think Jenna, we talked about that the other day. We would probably have the site plan uh, requirements complete within the district application. So when you actually go to the site plan part, it's a quick, you're just submitting that site plan again. And we just have to have, we have to circulate that through with our engineer and um, roads and the other departments, but that doesn't take more than a month, I would think for DRT and then, and that's an internal um, approval. Uh, yeah, sure. If you don't have I have so, yeah. I mean, pretty much laid the plans on, on, on the thing that I got from the contractor, yeah. and it took nine months to put on the shed at Catholic. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, just. just well, I know, and I'm just speaking from our process of about how yeah, we yeah, know yeah. I know it our similar processes correct. for these kinds of developments. Yeah. But just saying um, that, I mean, it just means it's most just, of just the. With that, and I put something up, and then it takes nine months for something to happen. Yeah. You know, it, which and is I, very easy. This seems like it's a harder project. Well, and what happens if that doesn't happen, then I'm stuck with this so building. What I'm saying though is all the work that for the application is going to be done in that first application submittal, which there is no timeline for that. Yeah. That that's all on us. Like you submit an application for the district for the rezone, you have to submit a site plan with that. And then once it's approved, then you have six months to just go through the administrative site plan with approval that we have to do like internally. And that's not, you've already done all the work for that. That's just getting eyes on it through our department approvals. So you're not seeing that there being any, between you know the original approval and the administrative work, there being any kind of delay that would, that would hinder that six months right there. No. Because there's a fear of me like saying, Sorry, it's not, not built, that, it's not building that matter. matter. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no, you're okay. I just wanna keep us. On topic, so um, and then you have two years to build it, to build it. So that's and we did we did that with the HDHO two years, and we did actually allow folks if they had reasonable issues, like you know during the pandemic, it slowed down some of the application processes, and so people were able to apply for an extension, and they we approved it with no problems. 
So, so there's flexibility with that. Um, 4.9.5 C, height, density, and scale. The first two, not the second two. The typo. Oh, we might be looking at it. Oh, this is the Well, it, the the comment is still relevant, isn't it? So, okay. Um, I fixed it in this version. Anyway, it's up on the screen too. So. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. I'm going to put it on the table. I'd like some discussion if there's any comments. We removed the um, up to four dwelling sites for every 0.5 acre and so on because we're looking at overall site coverage. In the process of applying a legislative overlay, particularly during the pilot program, do we believe the county commission should have the discretion to limit the number of sites on the property, which one could allow for more oversight, but also potentially allow for a otherwise reasonable use with maybe a historic use of a RV being on the site, but people are afraid suddenly, if I let you have one, you can build nine. So how can we give a the discretionary upper limit to the commission at the time of the overlay approval? Does that make sense? Is it sufficient to add height, density, and scale? Uh, I don't know where we talk about the coverage, but it can be 25% of number four. It says there shall be a minimum. Oh, sorry, that's not it. Um, number five. ADOs may be developed within the maximum height and maximum lot coverage allowed by the underlying zone district up to the number of units approved by the commission during the overlay application processes. Do we also yeah, have it? It's, it's not the same one. It's not the same one. Also, I'm seeing it out here now. It's not the same one. I'm looking, I'm looking at the one we yeah, found out in the meeting, that. but it's yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. I, me too, yeah. Uh, something else. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I think that's, I like that proposition, or at least capping it to a certain number of acres. It seems like people are really concerned about it. It's your total intent. Six copies of the Small they're not. I'm going to send you an email right now. So you have the most recent. Thank you. I mean, I just had trouble following. Same, I, I, kept, I, was like, yeah, yeah, I was saying, yeah, I don't yeah. see any uh, uh, thing there. And I actually have comments on the draft if we're going to go to particular uh, sections that you know I was kind of prepared uh, for. If we if we if we're going to go through this from front to back, so um, and we should we can yeah let's send a great thing. The so so the differences between the two they're we're, they're not <coughs> substantive they are um, updating some language for the most part. But Jenna's going to print out copies. So in the in the draft in the agenda packet, it included up to four dwelling sites per every 0.5 acre are permitted permitted up yes. to 32 sites. Oh, and then it's okay. that's such a no because that other version was it's been so much more updated I feel like well let's um, let's get the packet out. Yeah. Um, I so so the in, in this draft it was dwellings may be constructed to the maximum height allowed of the underlying zone district. And the one that um Elisa has been sharing this evening on her screen it removes up, up to four dwelling sites per da 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 and instead says ADOs may be de developed within the maximum height and maximum lot coverage allowed by the underlying zone district. And so this, yeah, this, this gets back to the idea we're not submitting a master plan for the number of sites. We're saying you can build up to the lot coverage of that, of that zone. Here's what that means. You have a rural residential property and you can build on 25%, thank you, of that land. You could build a giant home Somebody could come in and they could develop tiny home cabins using the same number, the same square footage. That's that's the, the distinction. What I am suggesting is adding an additional 
caveat to that, that you can build up to the underlying zone developable square footage or up to the number of units or dwelling sites approved by the county commission. So the county commission could come in and say, yeah, I think this is a great place for you to add four of these tiny home cabins, but I don't think you should be allowed to have 10, which is what maybe the lot coverage would allow for. So we're going to count it at four, right? So, you know, somebody could come back after building those four and um, you know, submit a new application to expand, but it would give you, again, the legislative authority to maintain that the density was appropriate for the surrounding properties. So how, again, we'll do a motion for each of these, but just general, like, we're totally thinking about this wrong or. I like the idea. I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense and I think it will give people a sense of control yeah. that a lot of people are feeling like maybe they don't have to say. And I don't get the sense from reading comments that it's, I'm against this altogether. It's I'm against suddenly my neighbor has 45 mm -hmm. units yeah. in their backyard, yeah. right? Yeah. So this would alleviate that concern. And again, the goal is not, the goal is to give something to the county commission that we believe moves policy goals forward, but also considers Um, while we're waiting for that, uh, thank you. So Elisa is sharing her screen right now. Um, maybe something like that. Maybe develop within the maximum height, maximum lot coverage allowed by other land zone district or up to the number of units of per Not to exceed the other line zone district. Okay. Um, So I'm going to return to the list really quick while we're waiting for, and then we'll go through it. <coughs> I know this is taking us time, but it'll make it much more likely to be successful in the long run. So hookups and impact fees, we had that conversation. Incentivizing illegal uses, we had that conversation at a high level. Noise traffic and density are three that also have been brought up. So some of this conversation has started to address that. I also, um, in the... Well, it's it's still relevant to this, even if we look in, in the draft um, the considerations. So when the county commission approves or denies a legislative application, they need to say why. I recommend including in that list. Fine. So we currently have traffic um, that they should need. The limited parcels, main egress and egress located on an arterial or cut the street for the UTNP. Relative availability of workforce housing and affordable rentals. So again, this could be used to say, you know what, we had 300 people in our population who lacked reliable housing and now in the last report it's 20. Right? Maybe we don't do this, I don't think. Um, Jenna, did it print with the actual suggested Changes and strike through, and we're going to have any trouble with Google Docs on that. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see all the there. Uh, appropriate location. So here's so appropriate location in relation to work centers, commercial nodes, and relative commute time. So this would give the county commission the discretion to uh, approve product <laughs> projects that are closer to the city center, closer to other nodes or commercial centers. This also, I think would be a justification of approving something in Green River, even if it was in a zone that otherwise might not be approved in the Spanish Valley area. Historic use of that property, including a historic use of alternative dwellings. So this is one that I have suggested. Um, yeah, there is a historic use and their neighbors don't complain and somebody wants to get online and pay those impact fees, this would be a justification. Do you have one? I'm, I'm working on the three. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Um, relative consistency with the underlying zoning, future land use designation, or existing community characteristics, including existing density. So, again, giving them the discretion to, to not spot zone and density. And the impact on water resources as compared to a single family dwelling development with the equivalent number of housing units. So as water 
continues to become a constraint, this would allow the county the discretion to make decisions based off of that without running each other. Well, and I think with the hookups to Brissa, I can't remember the ERU or what it is regarding an ERU, but that number's on there, right? So she can start. So. Anything else at a high level? Otherwise, if we want to start going through line item changes as they come up, we can. Say there's I, I would say that you could almost, if we're all in agreement on the changes, then there could just be a list of conditions that we would approve this with the condition of changing these. Great. That's, That's what I was hoping for. Thank you. It's so, uh, uh, it's actually kind of different, the one that we just got. So, I mean, one of the things I'm going to now read from this original one, and I want to make sure the change is uh, correct. I, at one point, was a little concerned not knowing what things were for. Um, so, it's a, the 4.9.1 purpose, the alternate dwelling, uh, the, OD, uh, the ODO. Uh, district is intended uh, to designate areas in which RVs, KOI style cabins, tiny homes, modular homes, and campers are permitted for use lo as long to long term housing, right? Now that makes it sound like maybe not just for workers, right? Or intermittent rentals for seasonal workers. Mm -hmm. Was that the intent? So the new one we striked through the calling out yes. the actual types of yep. dwellings. And now it just says, is intended to designate areas for long-term camping, intermittent rentals for seasonal workers and tiny home communities. So what does that mean? Does that mean it's for long-term camping and tiny home communities for uh, long-term? Uh, so is there any difference between short-term folks and long-term folks. So there, the very there next sentence says nightly rentals are not a permit. I understand use. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just I just wanted to make sure. So that this, this would include both long-term folks mm -hmm. seasonal. and seasonal workers. Mm -hmm. They don't all have to be workers. Uh, That's well, part of the conversation. But do we want on. a deed restrict or not? Do we want to have a yes. different way of enforcing or not? But, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I. I couldn't tell from the very first one, uh, you know, there is a long term housing problem for people. Is this, does this address only workers, which is just a fine thing to do in, in this thing? 
but the original language, I wasn't sure whether it was saying long-term folks and then the way it read, uh, camper vans are permitted for use for long-term housing or intermittent rentals for seasonal. So isn't that an interesting sentence, not, not knowing whether it was dividing the two groups? I think, I think it was just semantics, really. I don't think there was a lot of like, I think originally this change came out of our last meeting. Yeah. So, so this is just reflective of the conversation from the last meeting. Um, so let me make sure I understand, Kobe. Are you, I just want to make sure it's it clear really that it's a problem that that it's a it's either directed at workers or it includes a kind of long you know non-working. But I think it's meant to be workers. We have been talking about this in the context of workers, yes. and then alongside this, we have been working on potentially revising the definition of workforce in the code to include, for example people who provide care work who may yes. not be employed right. but whose children attend school right. and so on. So raising there, kids and having them in school yeah, was totally. one criteria at one point. Or mm -hmm. yeah, people who provide yeah. you know services for family members right. who are ill and so on. So that is um, the, the county attorney has been um, advocating for just simplifying to a single definition, which yes of course, and so that tracks alongside this, but the intent here has been for this to, to be for workers, it just doesn't have a deed restriction in it, which would be the explicit piece. This is deed restricted to. So this would, uh, but but workers would include, for instance, somebody with kids in school, or would it? Yeah, I mean, I think we have to work on that definition as part of this, you know. So, but even then, so the definition is cited for the sake of things like deed restriction and explicit enforcement. Yes. This purpose statement represents the why behind this, but the purpose statement <coughs> doesn't have teeth. If we want this to only apply to people who are part of our workforce as defined in the land use code, even if that definition evolves, we need to say it. Otherwise, this leaves some gray area for, for example, maybe people who don't currently meet the current definition of workforce housing, but otherwise, you know, so, so to answer your question, it, it doesn't really say anything other than this is why this exists. If, yeah. we, if we want to, we can add language. We just need to I, 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 since, and, and then I'll, I'll quit. I mean, it's part of the, it's part of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. It may, it may uh, imply legislative intent. Mm -hmm. So I'd be careful with how it's worded. That's all. So the occupancy standards are down on 4.9.4 and that's where you get to the peak of occupancy and uh, basically we're just saying nightly rentals are strictly prohibited in ADO districts. Alternative dwelling developments shall be occupied for a period of 30 consecutive days or more or less than 30 days by seasonally employed persons with group employment. So that's, that's how I was kind of thinking of it to simplify it. Um, so you could be in the you could not be a worker and still be there for more than 30 days as a local resident. Or if you're there under, under 30 days and you need to be seasonally, seasonally employed. Yep. So the question earlier was, do we want to add a caveat on those longer stays as well? Or are we comfortable with this language? Knowing short-term rentals are not allowed. I feel like just for the sake of being repetitive and sending the message, it would be useful to include that in the purpose statement. I don't think we necessarily need to hash out all the different possible types of units we can have, because I think it could be spelled out that this is intended for workforce housing, mm -hmm. dependent on that, you know, on that definition changing to include mm -hmm. caretakers, stay at home parents, et cetera. You could say that workforce housing as defined. In Great. The definition yeah. section. Okay. That's my personal take. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you had other comments. Oh, other. I, well, I mean, in the whereas statement. <laughs> my favorite statement. No, uh, I, and I don't know if it's been uh, changed or not. It, it was the whereas, and it's very I don't minor. I think that has gotten any traction. Or it's not in the, um, there. Were, I just oh, I did take out the one that you had. I know you did. The rental. Yeah, and and, and this was just. I mean, this is minor in the in the in the fourth. Whereas 
I think you may want to say May 2022 uh, was because you say in the June the price was. And it, it, since it's even further away to put is in there, didn't didn't make sense. But that's oh, I yeah. think no, the, you're right. I that's, think that's, that's the for sure. only <laughs> one there. Um, and I think yeah. so. This is now terrible because I'm going back and forth between <laughs> these two. But I'm going to try to do it and look like I'm organized. Um, let's just see why. Yeah. This, this is this uh, funny thing that I think Aaron brought up the last uh, meeting. The ADO, so this is 9.4.9.5 uh, under A and 1. ADO development shall be served by public water and sewer facilities. Does that eliminate wells? And does it eliminate, does it eliminate, you know, uh, yeah. something besides a sewer system? No, we want a and I don't think they're, at least from what, what I know of WIS is you can't be on a septic anymore. They forced people that were on septics to hook up as soon as, if it's, if that sewer system if you're, is running by you, you have to hook if up. If you're near the system, right. you have to hook you up. To. But we're talking, you're probably talking about like outside of WIS's jurisdiction. Right, right. If you are somebody that already has a property with a well on it and you want to put Or maybe a septic, even a septic. Well, you didn't. You can keep using your well. I mean, I'm going from experience yeah. of having so, yeah, a piece yeah. of property. I just that, think we just that, didn't put it in here that that would be allowed. That right. you could, yeah, especially places outside yeah. of Spanish Valley. Yeah. So, yeah. ADA yeah. development shall be served by public water and sewer facilities or an approved well and septic as well. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Good catch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, nice under A, I have a comment for A2, but I don't want to get that in septic. I'm still trying to match it. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to jump in really quick. Just yeah, jump, jump in. Yeah, a, ADO development shall include gray water reuse systems for all share or group shower or laundry. I, can we just add the language to the greatest extent possible? Yeah. I'm going to say should yeah. instead of shall, and then also to the greatest extent possible. Yeah. In that same section, bullet C, there's the addition of the word additional. I'm a little hung up on that. Additional bathhouses with showers. I yes. got stuck on that too. Um, Which one is that? 4.9581. You know, in the event that one unit is created, why are we? Oh, force them to have it. So digital. only if it was, so it needs to say an additional bathhouse only based on the requirements of the health department for how many sites there are not going to be hookups for. Like there has to be, there's a certain amount of sites that are bathrooms that need, need to be provided per sites gotcha. that don't have hookups that aren't self contained. Okay. So I have to, yeah. Per health. Code. Sites without utility Rich hookups is. shall conform to health care, care standards, including common facilities, bathhouses as needed, the showers, and the kitchen. So 4.9.5C5, ADOs may be developed within the maximum height and maximum lot coverage allowed by the underlying snow district, and we added, or up to the maximum sites allowed by the county commission, not to exceed, is that right? Oh yeah, I just want to make sure, I just want to read this out so everyone yeah. knows. ADOs may be developed not to exceed the maximum height and maximum lot coverage allowed by the underlying zone district or up to the number of units approved by the county commission. So that gives additional discussion to the county commission in approving this.
So since we aren't doing deed restrictions under the application, do we want to ask the developer to provide us with how they will ensure that occupants are members of our workforce, just like what's your plan of enforcement? Yeah. I mean, it should be sufficient to say, I'm going to collect all this information in an Excel spreadsheet, and if you ask for it, I will give it to you. But mm -hmm. can we be proactive? Keeping a log, yeah, that there's a mandatory. I like the language that you used before. Mm -hmm. On board with that. Note of it, I can't okay. It. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I can't either. <laughs> okay. I'm checking into again. Is there anything else in here that is just glaring and obvious? Mm -hmm. Are you feeling like some of your concerns are are abated? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be what it's going to be. I mean, the commission's fairly, you know, everybody's pretty concerned about this issue. I know. So, but again, you know, I'm responding to letters that are coming at us. Totally. And again, I'm going to encourage people to, if you've got all these friends that if you're, you're hearing the exact opposite, they need to be writing the commission because if we're responding to people as they're coming at us. Right. Right. Well, that's the thing always where, you know, there's always the people that are against something that are louder than the support because you don't always need to weigh in support. So it's good to yeah. know. Yeah, this is this is a this is a pretty big one that people need mm -hmm. to be speaking up about. Yeah. Um, I did send you guys impact fees from just so you you two have the information and I did um Not giving me, I, I wanted her to give me like the breakdown as far as ERUs, mm -hmm. uh, but she's still not giving it to me. So when I get that information, I'll give it to you just so you guys have that information. How are you doing? Anyone else have anything that's burning? If not, I'm going to start to move forward. So what we're going to do is we are going to go top to bottom and just uh, acknowledge the practical changes. If somebody would like to make a motion, the way to form the motion in addition to what is written in, in the packet would be to say, <coughs> for it. I'm not going to read the whole thing out. Move to send a blank recommendation with the following conditions. There are three listed here. So a pilot program currently, one year, 300 units. That's that. Develop a map. We currently don't have a map, so you can press that. I've not heard comments wanting a map. Not heard from county commissioners who explicitly want a map. Sounds like that's not coming up here. And if you are like these, all these changes we've just reviewed together sound good to me, your motion can say, and with the revision as tracked in the public document that we reviewed on August 22nd in our public meeting. What I'm going to ask is rather than listing everything you are for, unless it is only one thing, you can add with the exclusion of. And line item that. And now we can just be clean in our motion. Does that make sense? And just off the who attempts this. Okay. <laughs> so just, I just wanted to clarify just for the record, I think yeah. there was one written comment that asked about a map. We have had some some questions about it. Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to just no, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Does anybody have anything they don't like on our well we're gonna go to the top to bottom really quick oh, and just uh, just scroll through I Discussion if it's necessary. Otherwise, let's just acknowledge the tracked changes in this document. Okay. As, so any that are not reflected in what was just printed out. Okay. No, go ahead and yourself. We're, we're talking about everything that's in in green and purple, right? Right now. Is that I'm, I'm actually just going to call them as okay, exam to make it really easy. Yeah, I think the only thing we changed in the purpose section was this. Um, and we oh, added this little 
I added this as a suggestion. I just want to say, instead of adding the purpose of, since we already say the purpose, I just want to say this ordinance is to provide options okay. for different types of housing on a single lot to support market needs while respecting. So, so this is where we could add language saying, pointing to our definition of workforce housing. This ordinance is to provide options of different types of housing to people as defined in the land use code as part of our workforce housing on a single lot to support market needs, blah, blah, blah. A long sentence, but it's sort of long types of housing we need to for local uh, workforce, workforce. Let's just say workforce housing. Yeah, right, options for different types thing. of workforce housing on a single lot. We can capitalize workforce housing. For different types of for local workforce housing of different types on single lot. I don't know. This doesn't work. I'm sorry. I have to. We'll come back to that. All words come back. Anything else in the purpose statement that should or should not be here? Okay. Let's move on to applicability. Um, this is where those justifications are listed. So just again, our justifications that the county commission can use when looking at each individual application and determining if it's appropriate for this use. Traffic, as a general rule, ADO should be limited to parcels with main egress and ingress located on a collective street. Relative availability of workforce housing and affordable rentals. Appropriate location in relation to work centers, commercial nodes, and relative commute time. Historic use of that property, including a historic use of alternative dwellings. Relative consistency with the underlying zoning, future land use designation, or existing community characteristics, including existing density. And impact on water resources as compared to the single family dwelling development. So anything else, again, this is what the county commission would use when making a justification. So this is the opportunity to give them the tools to Make legislative decisions effective. Anything else that should be added or removed? I'm thinking on number six there. <clears throat> like that, um, of the applicability 4.9.2 oh, okay. bullet six as data is available at the end of that. I just I say mm -hmm. that because I'm I don't know what data is readily available mm -hmm. on these things and the, the mood of the moment. I'm not saying I disagree, but there's a water, people are freaked out about water, so I want to use facts rather than emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To face that decision. Yeah, use objective, <laughs> objective measures. And I did just send Emily and, and Elisa the ERUs, nice. like what, and, and Dana could clean it up if I if I did it for me. But then you would get an idea of how much water to use. So a big ADU plus one ERU. No, it's a little weird because I know. So anyways. <laughs> right, we're right. But, but then it's like, mm -hmm. What an RV, and then the small. But anyway, anyway equivalent, that was a little weird. Equivalent so equivalent residential. Yes. Yeah. So. No, I, I understand that. But oh, no, I'm, I'm sure like, everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. I actually didn't know. Yeah, so. No, it's yeah. all good. No, okay. And then I can't remember what Mark Stilson said. Like we still had, I can't remember three thousand. I can't remember our our development capacity, but it's not huge, mm -hmm. right? So you know, well, we've got a, a, a some leeway for sure, but well, yeah. I mean, they, there is, you know, there is at least one community that we know of, Cedar City, has over allotted and they're getting hammered. I think the they thing for me is, their uh, aquifer right. damaged it. Right. I mean, they overdeveloped it. I yep. think the thing for me is, is these people are already here. They're using our bathrooms. Right. They're using laundry facilities. Yeah, you're they're right. using, they're eating out and using the kitchens. Like their impact is already felt. It's just invisible. Right. Yeah. This would give, yeah, it would help with that statistic yeah. knowing. I'll build that we truly are. 
I want to see this kind of thing. never mind. Keep going. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's move on. So 4.9.3, identification on zoning maps. Approved ADO districts and development shall be indicated on, on the official zoning map. This is also where if you wanted to have an applicable facility map, it would reflect there. Right now, I get the sense that there is not interest from in this body to try and draw a map of where this would be applicable during the pilot phase. Trish, do you think that that would be like would that be would that make this more of a palatable thing for the commission? Well, if you're using connector roads, is that the term you're using? Yeah, I mean, so in theory, there the is a map. Meeting, we decided that we instead of trying to figure out a map of where we think they should go and where they yeah. shouldn't go, yeah. right? That we should just put together so a really good, robust list of criteria for approving them and the conditions for approving them, and that would guide where they should go. So and, that, and that probably does a good job on traffic, mm -hmm. given so that it's a it just program. those roads. I mean, you have those roads delineated. So it's on, yeah. So in theory, you have it referenced in the code already. Right. Right. Yeah. Let's say okay. The yes. okay. Let's move on. 4.9.4, ownership and occupancy standards. So here, Steve, ADO owners must maintain a log of tenants tracking their eligibility as local workforce, which the county will periodically audit. Scary enough. <laughs> <laughs> the nightly rentals are strictly prohibited in ADO districts. Advertisements of ADO units as nightly rentals, along with proof of no business license, will warrant a code violation, which will lead to an issuance of a citation if the activity is not ceased to desist within 10 days of receiving a notification from the county code enforcement office. The language there. And this is where we could say fines of up to thirty thousand dollars per <laughs> thing. But, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> I feel I feel like oh God. I just mean, I know. what's the harm? I don't know. Fines I don't of up believe to in capital 000. punishment, but me either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, man. If somebody knows this is, uh, right. so I'd rather let's throw it, it in. The seven, commission seven, could seven, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, so Yeah, I mean, I think it should push this kind of thing up there. I mean, it's a hundred dollars per day thing, which is not. Well, I do two hundred. I do whatever the rent are you. Be, yeah, what's the average rental rate? Three, probably three fifty a day. So <laughs> what's the math on that one? Fines of up to thirty thousand dollars per violation. Maybe well, assessed. you could do. I mean, maybe so. Like, a little if bit seven fifty. If it's seven fifty, <laughs> do seven <laughs> five hundred. Gonna do go something. Yeah, Christina's gonna catch it right it's now. Yeah. If well, theoretically, if we right. said thirty thousand dollars, they get a they get a notice. Yeah. Yeah. So they have time to it stop. It usually and shuts you down. Right, but they're not going to get yeah, $30,000. Yeah. No, no, like, no, they're going to have time. Have so time. this is like yeah. just a big, scary, like, yeah. yeah. They could reform. Yeah. Right. And be safe. <laughs> Fine, up to $30,000 per violation. Yeah. And All Christina right. will be, I mean, she's already got this. That's not going to stay. Yeah, but that's true. Okay. Um, 4.9.5. So anything else under 4.9.4 ownership and occupancy standards? We've, we've removed the condom and minimized language. Mm -hmm. Last meeting, so that's the last time. Development and use standards in ADO districts. So the track changes here are to clarify that the additional bathhouse or as needed was to comply with state health code. So that is the enforcing body there. To the great extent possible, ADO developments should include gray water reuse systems as the other track change here. Aaron, I'm looking at you. Oh, this is well. I mean, oh. I'm not like calling you out. I'm saying I know this is an area that you have expressed. Um, yeah, I, I don't honestly. I'm like I think irrigation is onerous, and then I also think that gray water systems isn't like that one guy said. It's kind of like not applicable. That's my just opinion of it. But anyways, yeah, I still think it should be. Um, can should we? Is good. Can we? Yeah. I was saying, can we just like encourage it? Encourage, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. We changed it so it's not a shell, it's a should, and it's pretty great. It's yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Moving on, common space landscaping and screening has no changes um, from our last meeting. <coughs> Height, density, and scale. So that has the adjustment that was made in the last week's meeting, but it's just clarified that instead of going from site maps, we are moving to land coverage with the changed language of. 
ADOs may be developed not to exceed the maximum height and maximum lot coverage allowed by the underlying zone district or up to the number of units approved by the county commission. So that again gives the county commission the discretion to have more legislative authority when approving these. Move on. Yes. Uh, site configuration also has no tract changes. Um, Anthony did it, or Tony. Um, he had the comment to actually give a, a, a little bit more of a variety for the landscaping requirement um, instead of just one tree that may be a shrub. Or, I, I want to, I think that's a really good idea, actually, yeah. because there are a lot of areas where it's trees, don't especially with all of our water tree. concerns. Yeah, it's, yeah. One tree, bush, or shrub of a species suitable to the area. I feel like you can build a shade structure out of steel or something. You're talking about quality. Right. <clears throat> trees are nice, but sometimes it's just not practical, especially with water concerns. I think potentially under C, height, density, scale, number six. It really does, in regards to the regulatory standards, it does kind of fall under the requirements of Article 6 development standards. In the event that that conversation ever comes up, mm -hmm. or something in Article 6 ever changes related to that, mm -hmm. it would just be referred back to whatever is required for Article 6. So we can take that out. You're saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we want to add shade structure in lieu of tree strip of bush? Shade structures or one tree shrub or bush, bush of a species suitable to the area shall be provided for the event. Oh, God, I'm hesitant just because plants are nice. Stuff. I don't know. Oh, wait, are you asking to remove it? Completely? There was just some oh, conversation yeah. about not, not removing it completely. Allow shade structure as an alternative. I just, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Pro providing like a. Especially with a, a, Heat sinks, mm -hmm. having some kind of green is nice, but yeah. Tree shrub or bushes. Plus it, it absorbs. Bushes are funny there. Yeah. The green <laughs> yeah. I, I just see like, now you have to put in an irrigation system and maintain it. And, uh, well, that, yeah, and the idea is like native, we've talked about them here, it's like mm -hmm. it's a lot of native bushes you can plant in water for a few months and then they'll just take off and go. Is there a way to write that sentence um, as per the landscaper? Or approved um, landscaping elements per Article Six. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's do that. I like that. All right. Let's move on. Site configuration, internal circulation, and parking. Again, there's no track changes. Tony did mention requiring concrete or gravel pad. Gravel mm -hmm. pad, the key gravel. And so I don't know that it shouldn't be there. This is, yeah, I actually had Bill Pulse and let's just go and weigh in on that. And he, well, he hasn't had a chance to yet because he's been so busy with everything. But um, I wasn't sure if that, because Tony did mention he thinks that would be a deal breaker for a lot of folks to put in four inches of gravel even. Brian, mm -hmm. would gravel be the deal breaker for you? Um, in 10 years, if there is a flood through there, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be the best to have a bunch of gravel down there. And I just don't know what would be, I, I feel like that almost should be based on what our engineer <clears throat> might require for proper yeah. dra drainage and- That's what I- That's, that's fair. You know. So maybe we just, um, I'll have to think about that. that I feel that if you were to do a concrete pad, because we're dealing with tiny houses and like manufactured homes, well, that's when you put like- But for a trailer. Well, we're talking, well, there's a difference here and I did define either if it's on a chassis or not on a okay. chassis. If it's on a chassis, you have to do a foundation yeah. to get a building permit right. and all that. Right. It's not on a chassis, but if it's still on a chassis, then I we just want to have some kind of oh, sorry some surface other than just dirt I guess um, mm -hmm. so I, I recommend you do that until we get building code I think we need to have more advice on how to word that from the engineer or from Bill mm -hmm. yeah 
All right. Uh, dwelling design, again, no changes. ADO district application. So my, my recommendation was um, the developer shall submit an ADO district application with the following information and um, adding a D that is um, documented plans for how to enforce occupancy by members of the local workforce or something to that end. Oh, I'm sorry, 4.9.7 B1. And I'm suggesting D that could lead along the lines of. Um, Let me back up just a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, D site configuration. Mm -hmm. The first point there. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting to me. It's shall is that to the greatest extent possible. Mm -hmm. Right. I get the passive solar. Yeah. With south facing, but that's typically when we have dwellings with roofs, mm -hmm. so you can shade that southern exposure mm -hmm. in the sun mm -hmm. or in the summer. And I'm also just thinking, like, in the event of, well, someone wants to put one or a couple and they've got great shade kind mm -hmm. of on the western side and they want to orient. Oh, you know, they would right. orient east, basically, mm -hmm. at that point. Okay. Yeah, and I'll say. So I'm thinking maybe just strike it or just say should <laughs> or mm -hmm. encourage passive solar design. I lived in an RV case, for a long yeah. time out in Spanish Valley and you don't want to shop so, face it. I mean, I literally, I there was a few times that. where I'm like, this thing's going to tip over. It yeah. didn't, but it great was, if it has a big, you know, yeah. but I'm not just talking about sun, I'm talking about prevailing winds out yeah. there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh -huh. no. Yeah, it was shelled to the greatest. Yeah, hold on, like it was catchy. Yeah, yeah, I almost think you just strike one. Yeah. Because it doesn't really apply to yeah. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. And the reality is RVs are not any energy efficient. <laughs> no, no, energy no. no. Yeah. Well, that's why I was thinking of putting it in there because they I get that, to, right. They, they tend to need something other than right. Like I just would hate I hate it when I see I know some of those manufactured or mobile homes that are just really bad out there oriented in such a way that it looks like the sun is just beating down on them on the on the longest part of the building, you know. I like the spirit of what you're saying, like something yeah. there is like a nudge. You could just right. say uh right. We could say shall, you know, or sh should, you know, provide some kind of shade for whatever. You know, it could be something like in prison able to provide shade mm -hmm. for these structures as opposed to because they don't have roofs, so it's just not like right. self so constructed and configured so as to provide Google on again doesn't work out either. I'll tell you that. Right. And then <laughs> ripped off a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really good kites. <laughs> no be, air balloon be RVs. Be <laughs> Watching the trampolines go when the wind picks up in Spanish Valley. So. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, we're almost through it. Um, that is it for our track changes. So if there's any additional comments. And what are our current terms? The current terms are 300 units one year for the pilot. Mm -hmm. Someone's getting ready to do a motion. <laughs> as far as we got. <laughs> um, but do we need to state that? Because is that still? I think we're filling the blank. That's only if you want to okay. change it. That's only if you want to suggest a change. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's, uh, sorry, let me open it up and make sure I'm not talking nonsense. With the following conditions to modify the terms. So if you are comfortable with the terms as written, you would not need to modify them. As I mentioned, instead of revised section, we'll say including the revised changes as tracked in the public facing document on August 22nd, except for if you want to add that and if you want to develop a map. Can I make a motion? Go for it. <laughs> I move to send a favorable recommendation to the county commission to approve the proposed ordinance to amend Article 4 of the Land Use Code to establish a pilot program for alternative dwelling communities and long-term camp parks as an overlay district with the following condition that we accept the revisions just made 
over the last 20 minutes of this meeting of the Grand County Planning Commission on August 22nd, 2022. Second. <laughs> All right, any discussion? Steve, any further discussion? Now, do I need to state my case or anything? Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, I think it's a very good plan and meets a big need of the community. And I like it being a pilot program so we can see how it works. Yeah. Any other discussion? The only thing I don't like is the the this idea of a map and limiting. I've said this at the last meeting. So we're not doing that. No oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There we would only do the map well for the approved projects. They would go onto our GIS map once they're approved. Yeah. I I guess not, I'm sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean map and that like with these. Um, the only concern I have is these arterial and collector streets oh, wow. can basically makes a map without making a map. And then it's like, well, we don't want it here, but we want it here. And it's because this street, mm -hmm. I'm still in the mindset that this is a blanket thing. And that, um, but I would understand where if you want another tool to, li to limit this. So I, I'll vote to approve, but that was just my only concern. And that's a consideration. So it's not. Yeah. yeah. Give the county has discussion, but no, that's great. Right. Any other comments? Okay. Is there a potential for somebody to come in and gobble all these up? Mm -hmm. We have that same problem with with HHO, and well, that's why they were. And that, <laughs> and ultimately, that's why I conceded on allowing for this kind of deed restriction without saying there's a deed restriction with the comment of tracking um, you know residents for living there. Mm -hmm. Well and then the, the limit yeah that'd be the discretion of if commission to the commission would be like oh you want 150 units? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah exactly. right oh you're thinking all oh sorry I missed your point mm -hmm. all of it like all of it. Yeah. Or ownership yeah yeah, yeah. Well, ownership could it's a free market I mean I've <laughs> I I I I don't know if that'd be a bad thing. Have thoughts, but one person would probably be able to bring those units on a lot faster, which would adjust the market and bring rents down a lot faster. So yeah. there's trade offs. Unlikely would be my guess. But any other comments? Um, I, I do just want to say that I appreciate the fact that we took this through the ringer. And I don't mm -hmm. think anybody here is taking this lightly, that this will create impacts. Just as not doing something like this creates impacts. And uh, you know, a lot of folks go unseen in terms of the impacts they live with when we don't have appropriate supply. Uh, but I also really appreciate, Trish, that you came with comments. And we gotta maybe figure out how to get some of those comments in front of us earlier on if we wanna be able to react to them. Because I know we have not had the volume of comments it sounds like you have. Um, and mm -hmm want to encourage people to continue to participate. I, I, except as the public meeting we had with 30 some I know, I wish people. We had it, it was, uh, but but it's, it's two different groups talking. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. We have that sign in this. We we do. Reach out. Let's, Let's do it. That would be a email really them. wise right to do. Your mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. With that, if there's no further discussion, I'm going to call the votes. I'll reread the motion really quick at a high level. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Seconded by OB. The motion to send a favorable recommendation to the county commission to improve the proposed ordinance to amend Article 4 of the Land Use Code, including the revisions made tonight tracked in the public document that has been available and shared during our public meeting on August 22nd. Looks like somebody's trying to enter the waiting room. Okay. All in favor? Raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for the hard work tonight. I know we went long, but we've got a few more items on our agenda. We're gonna power through them really fast. Can I ask um, a really quick question? Very quick. Yeah. When will this be on the agenda for the commission? Tomorrow or well, the next meeting? There's okay. no, yeah, it won't be tomorrow. It'll be at the, the next meeting, which is September 6th, I think. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's also the calendar. Mm -hmm. Send your letters before the sixth. Yes. Commission at yes. Grand County. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Commission at Grand County.net. 
uh, commission had been, yeah, I think it is. You can always go to the website too. All right, let's move on to um, quick dis discussion. Let's just do updates really quick and uh, we'll go from there if that works. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah. So we I did have originally I planned to try to get to Article 3, 5, and 10 updates yeah. at this meeting, but that was very unrealistic. So <laughs> we're I've I've we started Jenna when working with me on those and um we have a pretty good uh red lined version of the code for all of those sections. So we're, we're getting there. And um, I'm hoping, yeah, we would have this at the next meeting for a public hearing, potentially. Or up, it's up to you also if you you all feel that we're ready or we're not ready to have the public hearing and you'd like to actually go over these, these um, changes. It is a staff report later in the agenda. But um, I'm going to make the yeah, decision that Maybe that's not how we should spend our time right now, um, given this long conversation. Yeah. Can everybody please take time to review? Uh, can we resend the Google Doc around? Mm -hmm. Everyone take time to review the Google Doc. Um, leave comments. It seems to work very well. And which, sorry, which doc is this? So I don't know if I've circulated the draft yet, but I have, I do have this list here in the staff yeah. report of all of the major changes that we're looking at. Um, so I will get the draft ready for, for circulation and I'll send it out this week. Can we just, just generally ask a question? It would help in trying to draft two sections of the code. We're looking at amending the section of manufactured housing community one which currently is four acres requirement and we've kind of done designs on it, which is like an acre and some other design requirements. So it would just be nice to know if that's like a good to go, keep moving mm -hmm. forward with that. And the other mm -hmm. one that I was curious about that we're looking at is potentially adding the use of events set for a conference center to highway commercial. We don't have any use that allows that or any oh, comparable use. And we have a lot of people <laughs> that, that all yeah, the time for that. that. So mm -hmm. it would just be nice to know if anyway has some strong opposition to that or we could keep moving forward to edit something for that. That's great. I think that's okay. a need that we have long overdue. I think to address. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and then that update also includes the AD <clears throat> section, the temporary uses. So those were already in motion. Okay, so we can table that for great time. Do we need to formally table it? No, because it's in the agenda as table. Okay, cool. Um, County Commission update. County Commission, yeah. Chris, do you have any additional questions? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think I was just going to give a couple things from the emergency meeting that we had yesterday. We're going to have another one tomorrow, but. Um, all the city, the county came together, EMS, I mean, all the big dogs. And um, just a couple quick things. Basically, during that flood event, and this, I think, is something to pass on because I don't think we're done with it. Bystanders, bystanders were a nightmare, right? So it was really hard for emergency responders to be and road department, et cetera, and so on because of bystanders. Mm -hmm. So people need to stay home. <laughs> period right they can't be all over the bridge on main street at mill creek because it's just like people can't do their jobs so just kind of pass that along mm -hmm. and i know that they did post something on social media like please stay home but people didn't <laughs> yeah and <laughs> um, it just makes people it makes it really hard for people to do their job um just for you maybe more for you steve they're supposed to clean out that retention pond but on murphy lane that's yeah don't you like it after the fact they're going to go in and clean out because murphy lane is well, i just cleaned kind of, it out for them <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, I understand oh, um so that they're working on that i think all the water is back on there were some ma major breaks large big parts of town that were out of water but i think all water is back on at this point um udot is going to come and inspect all the bridges um, as far as as far as vehicular bridges, um, just to make sure, I know that the city engineer did go around and inspect them. There were a few cracks, but they're going to get UDOT down here to um, just solidify that. Um, you guys probably know this Mill Creek shut, uh, Parkway is shut down and is going to be shut down for a while. Um, 
Landfill is open for all debris. So mm -hmm. you guys have, um, and you guys can kind of pass that along as people do cleanups. The landfill is open and is free for flood debris. Um, and, and basically people can push stuff out onto county and city roads and, and the county and city will come pick it up, mm -hmm. right? So you can just push stuff out onto the roads. Um, they did just, they pass along, basically if you have flood damage, business and or residents, and they just posted this, you need to contact um, the county and city building department so that all of those can be cataloged for FEMA um, funding. We have right. a limit we need to read right. the damage to get that funding. right. That's the exactly. Point. So you need to contact the city or county, pass that along. If you have flood damage or businesses have flood damage, it has to be cataloged so that we can reach that yeah threshold for FEMA funding. Um, and basically, it was qualified as a hundred year flood, so pretty big deal. I think that's it. We're supposed to have another meeting tomorrow. I don't know that question, but I, I just, you know, probably for a bit, right? Yeah, so, so just go for it. That's, I understand that. Yeah, and I would just, I mean, if it's, yeah, I, I would say, yeah, it's probably for a bit. I can ask that question tomorrow and get back with you. But yeah, it's open and well. So that's kind of everything I have. But they're trying to be a little bit better about doing joint efforts as far as getting information in the city and the county. The communication has been great over the last couple of years. Way better. Yeah. Our, be better our be county better. emergency response individual basically got chewed on a little bit. So I think the response hopefully is a little bit more collaborative and yeah. a little bit better. Good. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, it's not been great. When you're finding out stuff through Facebook, meaning even commissioners, it's not that's not good. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Like, oh, I saw it on Facebook. I got mm -hmm. a text message. Mm -hmm. You know, but we had that great meeting yesterday. I'm supposed to have another tomorrow. And Steve White's been like just pushing, like, let's yeah. Do you guys have any questions about any of that? There's more rain in the forecast later mm -hmm. this week. I know, so right. I don't think we're done. Share and educate. <laughs> And hundred-year floods should occur more often than hundred. <laughs> yes, right, right, right. I know, I know. Right. Yeah. I had friends calling me from London. They were like, "I've heard about more." Yeah, <laughs> yes, all of them. That's how many people I know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on. Housing study contract. Um, yeah. So at the last um, commission meeting, we brought the con the contract to award or the I'm sorry. We awarded the contract to BAE Urban Economics for the housing study and the commission approved that contract. So we are moving forward with that. The kickoff meeting is going to be next week sometime. So um, we're excited to have that happening. And I've invited some folks to come to the kind of help advise along the way with the housing study and make sure we're getting everything right that we want to have evaluated. And so, yeah. All right. And as far as future considerations, it's just touching the state 31 meeting and then call it. That's all right. Unless there's anything else anyone is um, trying to do. Emergency measures for housing. Yeah. We're doing great work on this, but it sounds like with Brian's comments, you know, they've got a need now and we've got our busy fall season coming up. So mm -hmm. just putting words to that. So that way we kind of keep pushing on that. Cause this, I think yeah. if this ordinance passes that's great but we're not going to see any effective change for it right yep definitely who is, the, it. Who's, who is point on that right now we were working on some ideas um we've been talking to a few folks but nothing has been really solidified to the point where we could say everybody's on board mm -hmm. so i don't want to i would bring that to the next meeting possibly as an update on some possibilities for where we could stage some housing. And who's our working group here? Do we have them yet? You guys want to be working group? <laughs> sure do. Do you have everyone okay with that? We should right. reach out to Crested Butte since oh. I think they most recently did a like an emergency campaign. Oh, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. By we, I mean you. <laughs> I said by we, I mean you. Okay. <laughs> I'm in a new job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually don't want to be a part of that pronoun. So. Can I just do one thing on the future yes, consideration? Um, I know we're going through the land use code 
And I mean, this is kind of like my like thing is, is if we're going through the land use, I've been reading it and it's like, you know, we were, I, I just watched that, watched that presentation with Mark and a couple of my friends actually did the water study with the USGS. And I, I just didn't see anything on section 1.5, the purpose doesn't like we, we cover safety from fires, floods, traffic hazards, other danger. Um, I, I think, you know, we're getting these studies about water. Maybe now I would love to be like, oh yeah, now we look at water as part of land use and it's mm -hmm. in that code. We yeah. do have that as our priority for after the okay. housing. It was on the next list or uh, item on the list for addressing code changes okay. is to add in water conservation measures and mm -hmm. other kinds of um, development standards related to water. Yeah, it's definitely on. And it's review. cool that you watch that. And if you have ideas, things that you want from Mark, would you let me know? Because I'm kind of the one feeding him like, oh, let's talk about this now. Let's talk about that. So if you have topics that you want him to talk about, please feed them to me. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Perfect. No, you're right, though. We don't have much in the code right now about water. So yeah. It's and very lacking. Thing, I, I just kind of, I thought the land use code was that first page. <laughs> And now I've read, I'm like, I'm half, I woke up at 3 a.m. <laughs> well, you guys were right. There's a lot to it. So, <laughs> so if you could have that memorized. By yeah. 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 There will be a difference. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have been following in some of the like, planning circles um, conversation about having a planning atlas, which is obviously not the urgent priority, but making things like our land use code more accessible to mm -hmm. the public, the economy, things yeah. like what do we mean when we say yeah workforce housing um yeah. so um, maybe that's something for an event yeah. i think they'll do letters for, for a pr yeah, Gosh, on Instagram. That's all i mean awesome. it's here to make you know, slide decks all day long yeah okay any additional <laughs> future considerations all right motion to adjourn anyone yeah please Second. Okay. Hey, come on, Thank you for letting us stay here and hang out. <laughs>